on the body at the house in Latimer in Stony Stratford just after 12.30. They've described the death as suspicious but say it is an isolated incident. A 48-year-old man was arrested later yesterday afternoon. Bosses at Yarlswood have admitted that 10 staff have been dismissed from the Bedfordshire Immigration Centre following allegations of improper sexual contact with female detainees. James Thorburn, Serco's Home Affairs Managing Director, apologised to MPs for the mistreatment of some women. He said there'd been 31 cases out of 30,000 women detained at Yarlswood in the last seven years. I go up to the centre a lot and I speak a lot with the management team uh, about what's going on in the centre and they are absolutely mortified and horrified by the impression that is created um, by the stories that have, that, that, that have been going round. Labour says David Cameron has more questions to answer following the conviction of his former chief spin doctor Andy Coulson on phone hacking charges. A jury will resume deliberations this morning on allegations that Coulson, the former editor of the News of the World, and the paper's former royal editor Clive Goodman paid police officers for two royal directories. Nine du- judges at the Supreme Court will give their judgment today on the cases of two severely disabled men who want other others to be able to help them end their lives. The case is being seen as perhaps the most ambitious attempt yet to change the law on the right to die. In sport, football's world governing body FIFA is investigating Luis Suarez after more biting allegations. The Liverpool striker appeared to bite an Italian defender during Uruguay's win over Italy. Former England striker Alan Shearer wants a lengthy ban. Disgraceful, it's disgusting and there's no place for it. Um, third time. He should be should be absolutely hammered. Um, I'd ban him for. I mean, what did he get? Seven at Ajax, ten games at Liverpool. at Liverpool. Give him as much as possibly. Can. England's players are flying home after finishing their World Cup campaign with a nil-nil draw against Costa Rica. The weather dry with sunny spells, but not as warm. Cloudier this afternoon, a maximum temperature 20 degrees Celsius. And you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. It's a small village so that everybody knows everybody else, more or less. It's all about where you live. It's friendly, there's still a lot of community spirit here. And all this week we're featuring Wellin and Digswell. The quiet sort of feel of it, the fact that it still feels nice and sort of local even though we're close to big towns. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. Oh blimey. This is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Busy show this morning. Busy show, busy show. Bogus student suspicions in Bedfordshire. Serco and Yarlswood wouldn't come and talk to us yesterday because they were busy preparing for their investigation. Well, will they talk to us today? No, no, they won't. They won't. They must be recovering from their investigation. And let's be honest, let's be honest, we all admire Suarez a little bit, don't we? Don't we? If football players are allowed to bite or a little elbow to the groinage, I'd watch that, wouldn't you? Facebook.com forward slash BBC 3CR 08459 455. That's the fella, thank you. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Be honest. Football. Football is a very, very dull sport. Uh, I've, I have given... I, I've told you my ways of making football more interesting. Have I double... Super soccer, double football, have I told you that? No, tell me. Oh, this is brilliant, right? And this, I, why no one has taken this up, I've got no idea. Double football, super soccer. You have a square football pitch. Right. Goal on each side. You've got four goals. You got four football teams playing. There's only one ball, right? But then there's a there's a random bit in the middle of the game where a second ball gets tossed in for five minutes. Oh, it would be brilliant, wouldn't it? It sounds like a brawl. Double football. How many players are on each team? Is it normal? Normal players. Mm. Yeah, that's nuts, baby. That's you know nuts. What I do I'm local. I think that they should take out the whole centre bit of the what? pitch, so that it is basically just the goals. The more action would so, happen. Do you know what they could do for me? Yeah. 
Penalties. Start out with penalties. Everyone have a go. Okay. All over within five minutes. Can we have the normal telly on? Thank you very if much. If no one, if uh, the British Football Association, the BFA, are not going to um, invest money in my double football super soccer <laughs> idea, then uh, we should encourage. We should encourage biting. No, no. On. No. The football bit. Exactly. This guy, Suarez, he's fast becoming my hero. Have you seen the size of his teeth? Yeah. You would know about it if that got a grip. He's like, um, who's the fellow with the big teeth? Do- Dr. Fangenstein. Oh. No. <laughs> Is that the fella? Anyway. Got if the, you like. Doctor, he's like Dr. Fangenstein. Actually, of course, as we all know, um, Dr. Fangenstein was the guy that made him. The monster didn't have a name. No. He was Frankenstein's monster. Frankenstein. So we should allow we should allow biting in football. This has become exciting. There's a fella showing his shoulder to another bloke. You don't see that very often. It's very slinky. I agree, but I don't think we can encourage biting. I think biting. Um, okay. Well, it's several phone-ins here. Who would you like to bite? What have you bitten? What have, what has been in your mouth that should not have been in your mouth and you chomped down on? Steady. Please. Soap in the shape of a cat. Whoa, did you bite on a soap in the shape of a Took cat? The year off, yeah. Why? I just wanted to see what it was like. Soap. My Disgusting. S- my sister feasted on a display of... <laughs> it was a wax castle. She thought it was butter. Oh. They, she and her uh, fiancé so, at the time sliced a bit off, put it on the side so of she, their plate. she was prepared to eat a, a castle made of butter? <laughs> they thought That's it was, not common, is it? They thought it was just a swanky way of displaying the butter. They it sliced a bit off, people kind of looking out the corner of their eyes, and uh, she was the first one to pop it in her mouth and discover it was just one. This is, this is it. Well, this is it. OK, so, so who would you like to bite? We can do that. What have you bitten by accident? And what have you bitten by accident? Call me now, 08459 four double five five double five. It's going to be a who day today, I think. A who day? A who day. Now, the University of Bedfordshire has been banned from sponsoring new overseas students as nearly 50,000 immigrants are suspected of fraudulently obtaining English language certificates to get a UK student visa. Two private colleges in Luton, Britain College and IIM Bedford, are among 57... Britain College are among 57 colleges to have had their licences to sponsor foreign students suspended by the Home Office. The National Union of Students has described it as the biggest shock to international education since the scandal with London Metropolitan University, which I'm sure we can all remember and we're all still recovering from. Well, our reporter, Ewan Duncan, has been talking to the principal of IIM Bedford, Mustafa Mohammed, who gave his reaction to the college being included on the list. It's um, very surprising that uh, we receive, because we've been very compliant with all the rules and regulations of the UKBA. 
and um, when we got the information about the english language testing we have we have stopped taking all the students and in the last audit we had on the first week of this month we went through very well in the audit and we didn't have any issues no nothing has been flagged up so i'm really surprised with the news we will definitely contest against the decision what they what they have um, given us what does this decision mean to you we definitely going to lose all the business and then all the students will have nowhere to study so the the future of all the students who are studying with us will will be in shatters yeah. how many students are we talking about we have on the rolls around 64 students and uh, we had the capacity to take um, on board 400 students but because we've been so careful in selecting the students we took only 60 students there was some coverage earlier in the year about students fraudulently obtaining english language certificates is this connected to that in any way do you think yeah i think this is part of um, the investigation they are looking into so i presume this is in line with the same um, investigation with regards to the ukba rules we followed all the rules in here and wherever the checks are required we do all the checks but with regards to the english language toeic we followed all the processes so home office is the one who who has given the visas to the students so i don't see there going to be issues so you're confident that you can get this decision overturned yeah we will we will contest the decision based on um, whatever they write to us because as i said that, that um, we have been very compliant in recruiting and selecting the students in the last 9 months we selected only 60 students where we were supposed to take four, 400 students on board when would it really start to hurt you financially right from day 1 if they say that we've been suspended right from day 1 there has been issues with regards to the tier 4 visas right in the past so we diversified our business so that we also do english language courses here where we where our courses start from lowest level to go to the highest level so we also have local students we also have european students well that's mustafa mohammed the principal of the luton based private college iim bedford talking to you and duncan later on in the program we'll get the thoughts of luton south mp gavin shuka but for goodness sakes guys it's summer and turn and stick his paws into the bottom right and it sounds when he gets on your lap and he sticks his paws into your leg because he thinks he's going to sleep on a snake yeah my respect boss yeah Even though the man singing that 
was rude to me in an airport, I still loved those guys. Even though Al Jardine Al Jardined me, uh, I still love those guys. Travel news for beds, hearts and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Alice, did I ever tell you the story about when one of the Beach Boys was rude to me in an airport? You didn't tell me the story, no. One of the Beach Boys was rude to me in an airport once. That's shocking. Isn't it, Joe? Oh, 08459 four double five five double five. Has, has a Beach Boy ever been rude to you? We'll expand it slightly. Has any 60s pop star <laughs> ever been rude to you? Give us a call this morning. Alice, over to you. Good morning. We've had an update from Mike in Westcott on the A41 around the high street. The traffic lights aren't working at the moment. Just as you go through the roadworks area... Looking on the speed sensors in Luton, the airport way as you head towards the airport, heavy going just around Vauxhall Way. Public transport has no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Alice, thank you very much. I'm I'm realising that that may be a little bit uh, narrow-minded as well. So, has anybody ever been rude to you? That should expand it a little bit. (laughs) Oh, I've made myself chuckle. No one else, though. No one else. Six seventeen exactly. It's Wednesday, the twenty fifth of June. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. The University of Bedfordshire has been banned from taking overseas students, while an investigation is carried out into allegations of fraud in the student visa system. Two private colleges in Luton have had their licences suspended. A man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the body of an eighty two year old woman was discovered yesterday lunchtime at a house in Stony Street. Stratford. And in sport, football's world governing body, FIFA, is investigating Luis Suarez after more biting allegations. BBC Three Counties Radio. Be, be honest, though. Be honest. We all respect him a little bit more, don't we? BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. A beautiful old village with a real community spirit. And all this week we're featuring Wellin and Digswell. It's a bit like Trumpton, the way it was. Inviting everyone to where you live. You can get out into the countryside and go walking, cycling, whatever. There's plenty going on. You've got everything you're likely to want. Cafes, restaurants. If you've got a story everyone should hear about, let us tell Tell them about it. Quiet country living in a really convenient location. It really is a great little place to live. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks from BBC Three Counties Radio. Ah, dear. 08459 four double five five double five. Now, it's a story that we um, we mentioned yesterday and more has developed. It's emerged that ten members of staff have been dismissed from Bedfordshire's Yarlswood Immigration Centre following allegations of inappropriate behaviour towards detainees. The centre's operator, Serco... Um, uh, hang on a second. Yes, the centre's uh, operator, Serco, appeared before the Home Affairs Select Committee yesterday. The company's Home Affairs Managing Director, James Thorburn, insisted Serco set high standards for its staff and apologised for the instances where they've fallen short. Well, after telling us they couldn't speak to us ahead of the meeting, we hoped that they'd come on today after the meeting. But they can't, can they, Catherine? They've, they, they, they're, they're too busy or they're recovering from it? There's, I don't quite They're just understand. not coming on. Oh. Disappointing. Mm. So what's happened then? James Thorburn told the Home Affairs Select Committee yesterday that out of 30,000 women detained at Yarlswood over the last seven years, there'd been 31 complaints of improper sexual contact between staff and those under the Oh, is that all? Oh, that's all right then. That's not a bad percentage. Should be zero. He says all 31 were investigated and eight led to dismissals of the 10 staff that you referred to just now. Um, But the Labour Chair of the Commons Home Affairs Committee, Keith Vaz, who you'll be talking to later on, wasn't going to let them off the hook. He confronted Mr Thornburn with the case of a woman who complained of sexual harassment. When she was approached with a problem of headaches and dizziness, she approached one of your staff and he responded, she did not need medication but needed his penis. Is that part of your definition? So absolutely, sir, that would so be that part person of has that been dismissed. definition. And so that has that person been dismissed? So um, the person that you're referring to yes. is the report, and in that person case... person who made that comment, which you regard as being totally unacceptable, and I agree with you, it is totally unacceptable, has that person been dismissed? So that is unacceptable if it, if it is true. Yeah, but has he been dismissed? The nurse concerned in yes. that case. No, that nurse has not been dismissed. Just dwell on that for a second. Gosh. Uh, are they doing anything to sort this out? They're hiring more women. 
OK, right, yeah. James Thorburn said Yarlswood now has a half-male, half-female staff and is trying to increase the number of women they employ further. I go up to the centre a lot and I speak a lot with the management team uh, about what's going on in the centre. And they are absolutely mortified and horrified mm-hmm. by the impression that is created um, by the stories that have, that, that, that have been going around. Actually, we really welcome the CQC, the Care and Quality Commission report about our health care, the um, HM Chief Inspector of Prisons report and the ratings that it gave us overall in that centre, the Independent Monitoring Board report that was published a, a week, uh, about a month ago, within the last, the last month, all of which give a very favourable view of the overall establishment. Uh, there's so much I could pick apart there. He said, what, what, did it, what was his quote there about... So they're horrified and mortified at the impression right. it gives. It's so, a shame that Serco couldn't join us because there's an awful lot we have to discuss about. So, so they're, they're, they're upset about the, the impression that's given about Serco and Yarswood, not the fact that, thir- what is it, 31 women have made yeah. 31 complaints of improper sexual contact. That's what, that's what they're worried about, the impression that it gives... Oh, dearie me. Uh, and, and also, this, this thing that, you know, that there were there were only been 31 complaints out of 30,000 women. Well, there should be zero complaints. These are vulnerable women. Most, some, of them, some of them might be chances, but the majority of them have come to this country because they are terrified of the situation that they are in, where they are facing sexual abuse and rape and violence. And then we look after them and, and we don't give them much better chance. See, the problem is with this is that we only have the edited highlights, so we don't know yeah. whether that was challenged and whether those comments were standalone well. or whether they, they were qualified later on. It's a shame, Serco, you can't come on because if you're worried about impressions, this isn't the way to handle it. We're speaking it. to Mr Vaz later on, Yeah, hopefully okay. he can give you the bigger picture. OK, there was this, of course there's been a recent death at the centre, hasn't there? Was, yeah. that, was that mentioned? That was, yes, it was. The death of a Jamaican woman called Christine Case. That happened in March. She was 40 and she died very suddenly after complaining about feeling unwell. Now, there have been reports that she was denied medical assistance um, while she was complaining of feeling ill and her family are currently awaiting the results of an inquest to get the full fact of what happened. But there was a disturbance yesterday um, during the committee's talks when the MPs asked about her. James Thorburn described her death as a really tragic event. I have not seen anything to suggest that this was anything other than a very tragic and very sudden death. And indeed, in the coroner's hearing at the moment that's going on, the independent uh, GP who was commissioned by the coroner has said, I do not consider that this acute event could have been predicted nor prevented by the medical staff at Yarls Wood. And an, an ambulance was called within three minutes of the collapse that happened and the panic button being pressed. And my view is I can't see anything to say that our staff didn't act entirely appropriately and in line with all of our policies and procedures in such an event. And we, 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 order, order. Order. Members of the public gallery cannot... Sorry, order. I will suspend the session and we will end the inquiry if people interrupt witnesses from the public gallery. It is not in order. So, is this the end of the story for Serco? I suspect not. I suspect it may be the, just the start. Um, one MP told Mr Thorburn he was not satisfied with what mm. he heard yesterday and the committee will now consider whether to call women who were actually detained at the Beverage Centre to hear their side of the story. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll keep putting a call into Serco to see if they change their mind at some point over the next week or so because it, it seems incredible that you, you, they don't want to come on. They didn't. And their excuse, yes, sir, we, don't, we can't come on because we're preparing and then we'll... Catherine, thank you very much indeed. We'll be speaking to Keith Vaz later on in the show. 08459 four double five five double five. You don't know me, but I'm your brother. I was raised here.
that that's going to become Justin Dooley's theme tune. I've got a feeling that's already the theme tune he has in his head. <laughs> Taking it to the streets, you're going to tell me what you're going to do to me. Gosh. I don't know, as a doing. person. As a person. Oh, hey, 459 four double five five double five is the telephone number. We'll be doing the papers in a little bit. If you want to take part, uh, you're more than welcome. But I do, I do put forward this theory, and I, I, th- th- my tongue is not really in my cheek. My, I, I'm genuine with this. Suarez biting another football player. You get Alan Shearer. Oh, hey, hey man, he should be banned for late life and stuff. No, he shouldn't. This man should be given a, a crown made of diamonds and jewels. He has he has breathed life into this dull, flaccid World Cup by simply sinking his teeth into a foreign man's shoulders. It's the third time he's done it, though. Great. I think he wants muslin. He, <laughs> he wants what? Muslin. Oh, muslin. I thought you said muslin. I thought, why would he want that? I thought you said Muslims. Why would he want them? He wants muzzling. Muzzling. Okay, so, Suarez, he's made football better, hasn't he? You're, you're excited by it. 08459 four double five five double five. Who would you like to bite? Again, the same telephone number. Uh, and uh, what has been in your mouth and you've chomped on that perhaps shouldn't have been there? Uh, alternative title, what have you bitten by accident? There we go. Thank you very much indeed. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. We had a call from Mike, who's in Westcote. The A41 around the High Street. Traffic lights aren't working there at the moment, just as you go through the area with the roadworks in. Doesn't seem to be causing any major delays on the speed sensors, though. On public transport, with the airports, if you're flying to or from France today, there may be disruption because of industrial action. So if that applies to you, you're advised to check the status of your flight. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 6.30, I'm Simon Oxley. The University of Bedfordshire has been banned from taking overseas students while an investigation is carried out into allegations of fraud in the student visa system. Two private colleges in Luton have had their licences suspended. A man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the body of an 82-year-old woman was discovered yesterday lunchtime at a house in Stony Stratford. The 48-year-old man was arrested later yesterday afternoon. And bosses at Yarlswood have admitted that 10 staff have been dismissed from the Bedfordshire Immigration Centre following allegations of improper sexual contact with female detainees. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Football's world governing body FIFA is investigating Luis Suarez after more biting allegations. The Liverpool striker appeared to bite an Italian defender during Uruguay's win over Italy, but says he did nothing wrong. These situations happen on the pitch. We were both inside the box, he pushed me with his shoulder and so on and so forth. And, well, I was also hit in the eye. These are things that happen on a football pitch and you shouldn't keep talking so much about that. England's players are flying home after finishing their World Cup campaign with a nil-nil draw against Costa Rica. Here's manager Roy Hodgson. I don't think that any fair-minded person would suggest that the team did not show the right spirit, did not show the right commitment and that we gave at any time any impression that we had nothing to play for. And I think our fans obviously appreciated that. Last night, Colombia, who were already through, beat Japan 4-1, and Greece beat the Ivory Coast 2-1 with a late penalty to make it to the last 16 for the first time. Today's matches include Argentina versus Nigeria at 5 and France against Ecuador at 9. Both Argentina and France have won both matches so far. England's cricketers lost a dramatic second test to Sri Lanka and the series as James Anderson was out off the penultimate ball at Headingley after surviving 20 overs. Coach Peter Moores is backing under fire captain Alistair Cook. As a captain, yeah, it's been a really tough seven or eight months. Um, but I think he, he'll have said tonight, he'll say to people, he's in for the long haul, he wants to build a team in his, you know, with his stamp on it. And I think my job's to help him do that. In the Monarch Counties Championship at High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire did manage to hold out for a draw against Cambridgeshire, scoring 426 for eight, with Rob White, 185, not out. And Andy Murray is back in action at Wimbledon today. The defending champion will play the Slovenian Blaz Roller in the second round. BBC Three Counties News and Sports, the next full bulletin is at seven. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. FIFA, more like Teetha. Oh, that's terrible. You wrote it. You said it. I know I said it by accident. It fell out. Was that a funny joke, girls? 
Yeah, that was lols. I said I came up with that. Well done, Ian. That's Thanks. Probably the best thing you've ever said. Yeah, I'd probably say. one of the best things. I wrote that joke. Yeah. What? No, Karen. Tifa, more like no. Hang on. Fifa, more like Tifa. Yeah. Fi, I got it. Fifa, more like Queen Latifa. Yeah. I just took it to the next level. Oh. I don't know why Alice is shaking her head. She's a work experience. You should be nodding and laughing uh, sycophantically <laughs> if you want any hope of coming back. Yeah. Suarez, more like Rares. <laughs> That's a good one. All right. Uh, football, more like... Sh- no, I don't know. I can't think of any. Yeah, I wouldn't. Oh, OK. Hey. Uh, Jenny's... What? Yeah. Let's Jenny's on Jenny. the line. Well, let's speak to Jenny. Jenny's in Prince's Risborough. Good morning, Jenny. Hello. Jenny, what can I do for thee on this... Be- isn't it a beautiful morning? It's really nice, though. I've heard it's going to cloud over. Oh, well, thanks a lot, Jenny. Well, but- only in Scotland, though, don't worry. Yee! Whereabouts in Scotland are you from? I'm from Glasgow. Right? Oh, I love Glasgow. It's nice, isn't it? It is nice. It, it is nice now they've done it all up. It was a dump, let's be honest. I, I, whenever I went home, I used to not know my way around. Yeah. I'd have knocked down some more buildings. Every time... They were, I worked in Glasgow for a long time, and every time they, 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 they were just constantly rebuilding and, and doing it up. Glasgow smiles better. Yeah. Do you remember that campaign? That's how old Yeah, I that was the, uh, the Lord Provost that Kelly, his name was, that thought of that. I didn't understand a word of that, but never mind. <laughs> Jenny, what can we do for you? Uh, I write uh, children's books, and I wanted to be adopted as your children's books writer. Oh, this is awesome. Excellent. Yesterday, yeah. yesterday we, uh, we took over control of Houghton Chargers. Houghton Chargers is the official cricket team of this show, as is Chowdhury, is, is at the moment the captain of the team, but I do think once I've I've signed the documents. I think he's. I think he's out. And you're going to replace him? Yeah, with sure. I'd look good in whites. <laughs> I'd look good in whites. And I think I'd do a better job than him. But we'll, we'll just that's to be discussed off air. You want now, Jenny? You want to be the official children's uh, author yeah. for for this show? Uh, well, uh, what did you write? Did you write the Gruffalo or? or, or um, <laughs> well, that's, no, not at all. Did you write One Ted Falls Out of Bed? No. Shark in the Dark. No. Hungry Crocodile. Sing no. a song of bottoms. No. Did, uh. did, what what, song, what books did you write then, Jenny? <laughs> I've written uh, some books called The Abominators. Oh. And it's Ooh. about uh, a, a posh boy called Cecil Trumpington Potts. Yeah. And he wants to join a, a rough gang called The Abominators. Okay. They don't want him in the gang because he wears silk pants. How? What? <laughs> That's a weird gang. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I wouldn't. Anyway, how old, how old are, are, are the children these books are aimed it's at? Age 7 to 11. Right. Can I, can, I, can I make these books better in one strike? Uh, yeah. And make you a load of money. Yeah, please. Change the title. Shall I tell you what you should change it yeah. to? What? The, the Abominators. <laughs> the Abominators. Stop it. No, that's great. That's, see, she's laughing. You go up to any seven-year-old and go, The Abominators. Well, they would wet themselves. I think, you know, it could happen. I could ring up Little Brown and say, Blooming, change the title right away. Change, Lee has spoken. Change it to The Abominators. Catherine, you're a, you're a mother. Or The of... Boy in the Silk Pants. I mean, that, that use, would be good too. Using uh, pants is always a winner. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. I think that. Yeah. Okay. I think. I think we've gone badly wrong. Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. Listen. <laughs> listen. So we glad all, you came to us. We all learn from our mistakes. You, that's it. You're, you're, we, you're, we're adopting you. You are the official children's author of this show. Oh, wow. And you, is, you can that's... tell anybody you want. So I wanted to write a book inspired by the story about your mother. Oh, when blimey. she went to hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thought, the abominators, I yes. I thought it could be called Granny's Big Surprise. There we go, Jenny. Oh, well, it wasn't that big, big a surprise. Jenny, thank you very much. She's the official... Pop-up uh, book. Pop-up... <laughs> Did you did you hear the story about my mum going to see Hair the Musical, Kelly? I don't know if you were. Please tell me. Right, so my mum, I took my mum to see Hair the Musical, and there's a famous scene in Hair just before the interval where they all whip their clothes off. Mm. They're all hippies, and they whip their clothes off. And uh, my mum, we were in the balcony, and because uh, she's in a wheelchair, so she gets the seat sort of right by the edge. She gets plenty of room. Okay, and they climb up the balcony. They climb up into the balcony, and they're all singing and dancing naked, right? And this fella, this hippie, they're singing, let the sun shine. So imagine my mum sat here in a wheelchair, right? And then this fella's going, let, naked, let the sun shine. He puts his foot up on the edge of the balcony, and he's singing to my mum like this, with everything oh. flapping in the breeze. Let the sun shine. Wow. My mum had the time of her life. Wow. And she turned to me and said, Ian, it's been a long time since I've seen one of them. Oh, <laughs> things you don't want your mother to say to you. 08459 four. Do- I had. Can I tell this story about my mum? Uh, I can. I love it when you preface them with that. OK. My mum, right, she, um, uh, she was on a legal cannabis trial. Right. By, from a bloke called Dave. 
We just come round. No, no, it was no a way. it was a medical medical Dr. trial. Dr. Right? Dave. Dr. Dave. It was a medical trial. It was with Reading Hospital. It was all legit. And she was it was on a cannabis trial for her, her MS, and I would have to go with her and fill in these are things you never want to say to your mother. I would have to go. I'm going to use a rude word, so you might want to get children away from this. I would have to go in because she can't. Can write. you replace it? I don't think you can, but you can replace it with something worse. It's a medical word, but it's a rude medical word. Look at you panicking. I can't wait to hear it. It's, it's, OK, so I had to go and fill the forms in, and you had to ask these questions. Every time you'd have to ask these questions about uh, how you felt, how it made you feel, whether you could cut your pain down and stuff like that. One question oh, I... Oh, I know what this one is. I don't think you do. I do. I think I've heard it before. One question I had to ask my mother. My about mother. an organism. And I saw this question coming up. I said, right, Mum, I'm going to ask you this question, and we are never going to mention this ever again. When was the last time you had an orgasm? Oh! Oh, questions you don't want to ask your mother. What was the answer? <laughs> I don't know. I've blacked that bit of, uh, of, of history out of my ears. Awful, awful. Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five. Justin. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Imagine ask. I mean, yeah. No, no. No. Don't even. Don't. Let's take it. Even. Now listen. Uh, football. Yes. Is uh, bobbins, as we all know. Mm-hmm. But today football's really fantastic. Why? Two Frank Sidebottom quotes there for the price off, because Luis Suarez. Has, has made it exciting, he's made it sexy, he's made it funky, he's made it groovy. He bit a fella, <laughs> and it turns out he's done it before! <laughs> yeah, the third time. This I, guy's nuts! And you think this is fun? I think this is great. I think this is what football... Let's be honest, Justin, very flaccid World Cup. Did we win the game last night? No, okay. it was uh, nil-nil. So if I've got my stats right, yes. that's the, England's worst ever showing in a World Cup, right? Yeah, pretty right. poor, yeah. Okay. Dull World Cup. Apparently, it still goes on for another d- f- few weeks. I, uh, I'm not yes. Really, yeah. Suarez has made it exciting. No, he hasn't. Oh, mate, come on. The man is an idiot. He should be banned for at least two years. Why should he be banned? He's a footballing genius. <laughs> you can't go onto a football pitch and bite people. Catherine. Muslim in public. Put him on an extender lead. Do what to him? Muzzle him. I thought you said, okay, muzzle him. Yes, I thought, I thought you said something else. So for did a I. Yeah, I know again. <laughs> what? What? what is your problem, guys? No, it's not our problem. It's your accent. <gasps> you make muzzling sound like Muslim. <laughs> muzzle him. Muzzle tough. Um, so, muzzle tough. <laughs> so, uh, he's made it exciting, though, hasn't he, Catherine? We're talking about football and we well, have football. I'm not interested in football. I am interested in what motivates a grown man to bite someone else. Oh, guys, <laughs> come on. Listen, this is what we need on the pit. How many other. Okay. This will show you what a genius he is, right? How many other football players are adventurous enough, clever enough, bold, brave, daring enough to use their teeth in a game? Yeah, we use the knees, the feet, the ankles, the heads. You're talking about him as if he's been a sensitive lover. Teeth. He's not supposed to be using his teeth. Here, here. Sorry? Should be banned. It's a non-contact sport. <laughs> sorry, sorry, old man. Can we get Justin back on the line? Uh, Is that he's, possible? He's got to go. Uh, have you seen the teeth marks in this man? Oh, mate, come on. Honestly, he'd be on the naughty step of my house. All right. Well, you, you've been um, taking this to the yes, street, haven't exactly. you? Uh, yes, exactly what I've been doing. Early doors this morning. Uh, getting people's reaction. Ian, here's what people make of Luis Suarez. Should I press play? Please. OK. John, you saw the bite. Uh, your reaction? Disgraceful. What's the matter with the guy? What's the matter with the guy? Should be banned for a long time. How long are we talking? Three, four months, perhaps. When was the last time you actually bit somebody? Can you remember? When I was 20 and she didn't didn't appreciate it much. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Oh, just an old girlfriend, yeah. you know. <laughs> For f- the fun bite, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. That's it. Oh, a fun bite. <laughs> yeah, fun no, not a Suarez no, evil bite. No, 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 nothing like that. No. But she didn't like it? Not at the time. <laughs> What's your reaction, Alan? Luis Suarez. I think you should take condiments onto the pitch, some pepper, salt and pepper, maybe some sauces and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or have a good meal before he, before he plays. Yeah. Um, what's his problem? He's just a little bit mad, isn't he? He's that fine line between genius and lunatic, really. Oh, he should be out of the next couple of games, at least. Maybe the rest of the World Cup. You can't do that, can you? Mm-hmm. I'm just reading about it at the moment. He says it's an accident. How can that be an accident? It wasn't, was it? An accident it's for the third time? Yeah, it wasn't an accident. He said, we just clashed in the penalty area. These yeah. things happen. You should make a big deal of it. But he put his head on him and bit into his shoulder. So it wasn't an accident, was it? Yeah, we'll <laughs> certainly pass on uh, the feedback about having a meal before he goes yeah, onto the should, pitch. Yeah, he should get himself you know, some beans on toast, poached egg on toast, <laughs> shoulder of human, sorry, shoulder of lamb, maybe. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm 
surprise we haven't seen you before. You're very good. And um, just lastly, when was the last time you bit somebody? Can you remember? Yeah, my, my son, because he was biting me when he was about four. He kept biting me, so I'd give him a little bite back, but only very gently. Yeah, that's what we do. He wants condiments. Yep. Give him some condiments. Yeah. Hey, Send him now, listen, when I bit the cat at the age of three and threw it down the stairs... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Rewind. You bit a cat... Yeah, I bit Toby. What? I got. Uh, I had his whole paw in my mouth, and I chomped <gasps> down, and then I chucked him down the stairs. Oh, you you should get a two-year ban as well. Well, 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 my mum said... Mm-hmm. And this, this, so this is why I'm on Suarez's side. My mum said, why did you do it? And I said, I remember it very well, he put his paw in my mouth. Boom, have some of that, Tobes. No. And then do you know what my mum my mom did to, to stop me doing it again? Go on. She rolled up my sleeve. She bit you. She sunk her teeth into my forearm, my ah. three-year-old forearm. You deserved it, boss. Oh, mate. Come. Yeah, you did. Come on. A bit like that man there in that piece. His son was no. biting him, so, no. so he bit him back. He said, Out- right, you won't be doing that again. Outrageous. Outrageous behaviour. Justin, we'll speak to you a little bit later on. We'll find some more bits and pieces for you to do. 08459 four double five five double five. There. You pressed a fade or something. I know. Is there, have we got a fade button? Oh. Um, Alice, did you do something? No. You sure? I'm pretty sure. She was really quiet there. I think she was up to something. I think you. I think. <laughs> I think you were up to mischief. No. Have you got a secret fade in there? Um, no. Right. Let me try this. If this if this goes wrong, then we'll have words. Oh, that's fine. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The M1 London bound, heavy going between the Toddington services and Junction 11 for Dunstable. Also slow going now between Junction 10 for Luton and 9 for Redbourne. The M25 anti-clockwise also looking very slow between Junction 21 for the M1 and 20 for Kings Langley. Public transport, no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. I'm going to let you off this one time, Alice. Just this one time. 6.46, it's Wednesday the 25th of June. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. The University of Bedfordshire has been banned from taking overseas students while an investigation is carried out into allegations of fraud in the student visa system. Two private colleges in Luton have had their licences suspended. A man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the body of an 82-year-old woman was discovered yesterday lunchtime at a house in Stony Stratford. And in sport, football's world governing body, TIFA, hmm? have opened disciplinary proceedings... It's FIFA, actually. Have opened disciplinary proceedings... I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to mess around in the news, sorry. Have opened... Dis- sorry, I won't do that again. Uh, but TIFA's a joke. Queen Latifah. Uh, the biting man. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
Good morning. It's a beautiful start to the day. Blue sky, sunshine, just a bit of a different feel. It's a bit fresher outside this morning. Some cool air has moved in overnight and we're hanging on to this fresher air through the day, but we're still getting the sunshine and it's going to feel reasonably warm. The maximum temperature getting up to around 20 Celsius later on this afternoon. Overnight, a similar night to the one we've just had. Some patchy cloud, the wind is light. We could get a bit of mist by dawn, but the minimum temperature 11 Celsius, 52 degrees in Fahrenheit. Similar day for Thursday, dry, fine, lots of sunshine. May start to see a bit of cloud develop as we head through tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. Uh, but we've still, still enjoyed the sunshine up until then. 21 Celsius, uh, that's 70 degrees in Fahrenheit. It's overnight Thursday. We'll start to see the rain arrive. Some heavy showers on the way. Not likely to join us much before midnight, but when they do, they're fairly heavy. Could hear a clap or two of thunder, flash of lightning also, and uh, they're going to continue and stay with us right the way through the weekend. And that's your forecast. Oh, a little bit of thunder. From this weekend, Saturday mornings are getting a bit of a shake-up. Shake I'm bringing you Treasure Quest from Nine. If we get to Wollaston, we don't then know where we're going in Wollaston. No. Correct. Hunting treasure across Bedfordshire, Hertfordshire, Buckinghamshire and Northamptonshire. I find myself in a very unfortunate position of being able to help Tim because I'm a Northamptonshire girl born and bred. Which means I'll be with you from 12 every Saturday lunchtime with your forgotten tracks, musical memories and requests. I love you because by Jim Reed. My dad was his favourite tune and he used to walk around singing it. A brand new way to start your Saturday. From this weekend, here on BBC Three Counties Radio. Three Counties Radio, 08459 four double five five double five. Seriously, football is a much more exciting place with characters like Luis Suarez playing. Isn't it? 
makes a much more exciting, much more interesting experience for everybody involved. You'd be a fool not to not to think that. And on the back of that, who would you bite and what have you uh, chomped down on that perhaps you shouldn't have? 08459 455 555 is the telephone number if you want to give us a call. Now, David Cameron is expected to face a tough Prime Minister's question time this lunchtime. It should be a corker! Should be a corker. He'll face further scrutiny over his appointment of Andy Coulson as his spin doctor in the wake of his conviction for phone hacking when he was editor of News of the World. Meanwhile, the jury in the case will return to the Old Bailey this morning to consider more charges against him. Joined by our, by our political correspondent, Paul Rowley. Morning, Paul. Good morning, Ian. Well, where does this all leave the Prime Minister? With egg on his face, at, at the very least. Indeed. I mean, he is in some difficulty. He employed Andy Coulson when he resigned from the News of the World uh, in 2007 when one of his reporters and a private investigator were jailed for phone hacking although he denied at the time knowing about what was going on David Cameron saw him as a pretty media savvy operator whom he felt could help the Conservatives who were then in opposition connect with voters that the Tories had difficulty reaching and having helped get his boss into Downing Street in 2010 albeit as a Prime Minister leading a coalition government he was rewarded with the job uh, as his communications director despite warnings from many in the Conservative Party, indeed, and from outside, the likes of Nick Clegg and John Prescott among them, that it was a somewhat risky appointment, given his background. But David Cameron has apologised. He came out and apologised very, very quickly yesterday for appointing Andy Coulson, saying it was a bad decision. Is that enough, do we think? Well, uh, I think not enough for Labour, uh, because they think that David Cameron's vulnerable on this, and crudely, Ian, ten and a half months away from a general election, at a time when Ed Miliband is facing questions within his own party about leadership, whether he's up to the job, this allows him to question the Prime Minister's credibility and his judgment in appointing somebody who is now, let's be blunt about it, a convicted criminal. One of Ed Miliband's early successes, and uh, he hasn't had many of those, uh, was to campaign for changes to press regulation, which led to the setting up of the Leveson inquiry. The argument he made at the time was that David Cameron was sucking up to the Rupert Murdoch empire, but let's be blunt about it, they all do it. Tony Blair became godfather to one of the Murdoch children, Gordon Brown. Brown's wife, Sarah, had a pyjama party at Downing Street with Rebecca Brooks, Andy Coulson's predecessor as News of the World editor. She was his boss when uh, she became the chief executive of the newspaper's parent company. And as we heard in the trial, uh, they were lovers as well, although she was cleared of all charges. Still outstanding charges facing Coulson. When will the jury reach its conclusion? Will it be today? Well, they return at 11 this morning. They sat later than usual last night, but still couldn't reach a verdict. There are a couple of outstanding cases, uh, which uh, technically they're called committing misconduct in public office. What it means is they, they relate to the alleged payments to police officers who were protecting the uh, the Queen uh, for a confidential phone directory containing the direct line numbers and presumably the mobile phone numbers of members of the royal family. Now he's jointly charged with Clive Goodman, the newspaper's former royal editor who was dub- dubbed the, the rogue reporter when he was first convicted of phone hacking seven years ago. Notice the Independent this morning leads on the rogue editor as it were. Andy Coulson is already facing the prospect of a jail sentence as a result of yesterday's conviction alone. Indeed, Rupert Murdoch himself is seemingly facing questions by police when this trial is over. So there are are also five other former News of the World staffers who are facing criminal charges. So after a a, a case lasting eight eight months at the Mm. Old Bailey, Ian, for for something that's estimated to have cost £100 million so far and, uh, you know, the death of uh, what was Britain's most successful newspaper, the News of the World... This is not over by any means. Paul, thank you very much. We'll be able to speak more freely, of course, when um, the the, uh, verdicts are brought in on the other charges. Sonny, yesterday my life was filled with rain. Sonny, you smiled at me and really eased the pain. Now the dark days are done and the bright days are here. My sunny one shines so sincere Sunny one so true I love you Sunny Thank you for the sunshine you gave Sunny Thank you for the love you brought my way You gave to me your all in all 
Sunny, one so true, I love you. Sunny, thank you for the truth you let me see. Sunny, thank you for the facts from A to Z. My life was torn like wind blown sand. Then a rock was formed when we held hands. Sunny, sunny one so true. I love you. Sunny, thank you for that smile upon your face. Mm, sunny, thank you, thank you for that gleam that flows with grace. You're my spark of nature's fire. Man, I love a bit of Sunny. Bit of Bob. Well, I've got to cut it short, I'm afraid. We'll play the whole thing at some point later in the week, I promise. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the M25, anti-clockwise, very slow between Junction 21 for the M1 and 20 for Kings Langley. Also struggling now between Junction 17 for Maple Cross and 16 for the M40. The M1 London bound between the Toddington services and Junction 9 for Redbourne looking heavy in patches. Then on the speed sensors in Mark Yate, the A5 Redbourne bound really building up around the Luton Road. Public transport has no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much, Alice. Speak to you in a few minutes or so. So, Luis Suarez has made football more exciting. Discuss. What have you put in your mouth that perhaps you shouldn't have done? We'll find out after the news with Simon Oxley. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's seven o'clock. The headlines, Luton College to fight visa ban. Man arrested after 82-year-old woman found dead in Milton Keynes. And Luis Suarez facing another ban for biting. BBC Three Counties Radio. The director of a private college in Luton whose licence to take overseas students has been suspended says he will contest the decision. 57 private colleges, including two in Luton, have had their licences suspended. And the University of Bedfordshire has been banned from taking overseas students while an investigation is carried out into allegations of fraud in the student visa system. Mustafa Mohammed is from IIM Bedford in King Street in Luton. We will contest the decision based on um, whatever they write to us because as I said uh, that um, we have been very compliant in recruiting and selecting the students. In the last nine months we selected only 60 students where we are supposed to take 400 students on board. A man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the body of an 82-year-old woman was discovered yesterday lunchtime at a house in Milton Keynes. Police officers found the body at the house in Latimer in Stony Stratford just after 12.30. They've described the death as suspicious but say it is an isolated incident. A 48-year-old man was arrested later yesterday afternoon. Bosses at Yarlswood have admitted that 10 staff have been dismissed from the Bedfordshire Immigration Centre following allegations of improper sexual contact with female detainees. James Thorburn, Serco's Home Affairs Managing Director, apologised to MPs for the mistreatment of some women. He said there had been 31 cases out of 30,000 women detained at Yarlswood in the last seven years. I go up to the centre a lot and I speak a lot with the management team uh, about what's going on in the centre and they are absolutely mortified and horrified by the impression that is created um, by the stories that have, that, that, that have been going round. Labour says David Cameron has more questions to answer following the conviction of his former chief spin doctor Andy Coulson on phone hacking charges. A jury will resume deliberations this morning on allegations that Coulson, the former editor of the News of the World and the paper's former royal editor Clive Goodman paid police officers for two royal directories. The veteran Hollywood actor Eli Wallach has died at the age of 98. He was the bandit leader in The Magnificent Seven and also starred in The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. In sport, 
Football's world governing body, FIFA, have opened disciplinary proceedings against Luis Suarez after more biting allegations. The Liverpool striker appeared to bite an Italian defender during Uruguay's win over Italy. Former England striker Alan Shearer wants a lengthy ban. Disgraceful, it's disgusting and there's no place for it. Um, third time, he should be he should be absolutely hammered. Um, I'd ban him for, I mean, what did he get, seven at Ajax, ten games at Liverpool? At Liverpool. Give him as much as possibly can. England's players are flying home after finishing their World Cup campaign with a nil-nil draw against Costa Rica. The weather dry with sunny spells, but not as warm. Cloudier this afternoon, a maximum temperature 20 degrees Celsius. And you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. You're only about two minutes from being in the countryside. And all this week we're featuring Wellin and Digswell. There's a lot of local things going on. One of the focuses for that is Wellin Festival, which is ten days of about 70 events. It's all about where you live. Love it. It is charming. Love it. I love it. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. This is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties. What a gorgeous morning. Although, if I'm honest, I find it upsetting driving in when it's sunlight. Do you have that, Kath? Yeah, I feel like I'm missing out. It could, no, I don't feel like I'm missing It just confuses me. I was driving in this morning, and, and uh, about half past four, 20 to five, it was bright sunshine on the motorway. What was that all about? I quite like coming in when it's dark because it feels like you're stealing a march on the day. Yeah, exactly. Exacto mundo, Officer Fonzarelli. 08459 455 555. These are some of the things that we are talking about today. Bogus student suspicions in Bedfordshire. What does it mean? Stay tuned and find out. Uh, Yarlswood firm still won't come and talk to us about their predatory guards. And let's be honest, Suarez has made football, well... He's made it exciting, hasn't he? It's a very, very dull sport that suddenly we're all talking about. 0845, are you off? What's wrong? No, it's fine. Do you want a cough? Yeah. I mean, a cough, a cough. Do you want a cough? Yes. Shall I turn the microphones yeah. down? Okay, go. No, I'm I'm done. Okay. 08459 four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Um, we've got some... Uh, where have those texts gone about uh, Toofy Texas? With the amount of money Suarez is on, you'd think he'd get them horse teeth put back in his mouth. He was either hungry or wanted to give him a hickey. We don't call it a hickey over here, we call it a love bite. Ban him from the World Cup, says Jack in Luton. Why, why ban the most exciting player from the World an Cup? animal. And, listen, let's be honest. Should we let a marauding bull out as well? Permission Make to... Make it exciting. Oh. Or a lion. Oh, if there's, a li- there's a lion on the pitch and they have to play around it and the bull smells of meat. This is awesome. The ball smells of meat. <laughs> Put a steak inside it. <laughs> now you're talking. That is a World Cup that anyone would be proud uh, of watching. No, we don't. We don't want to ban him for goodness sakes. They're footballers. They're not gladiators. Can I just say this? All footballers, there'll be exceptions. All footballers are very, very thick men who've got too much money. They're all stupid. They're not all stupid. I said that is, some of them are not educated. So they're thick? No, I wouldn't say they were thick. Well, if they're not educated... If you showed any prowess on the pitch, back in your day, they've changed it now, but any yeah. prowess on the pitch back in yeah. the day, you get whipped straight out of school and into that programme, so you're not reading books anymore. Nowadays, they do look after them a bit no, better. No, 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 no. People who are good physically are not good mentally. Do you know what you I'm reckon? saying? You reckon? Oh, fact. Fact! Clark Carlisle, he's a clever bloke. Well, who is he? Footballer. Well, I've never heard of him. Who does he play for? <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Clark, Car- Clark Kyle Eilish, if you're listening. Tell us. If you're listening, uh, get your. Um... I think he used to play for Watford. Right, OK, Clark, get your nanny to dial the phone number. Phone number and speak oh, to us. Oh, I wish he would, he'd have you. You reckon? Yeah, he's brilliant. And in that case, maybe not you, Clark. I'll let you off. But um, any of the other footballers. Talking, I'm talking Premier League here. Yeah. That's the number one league, yeah? Is that the number one league? What's the first league? What's the League One? Talking League One, League Division One here. What's the best league for football these days? I'm interested in getting involved with it. <laughs> what? 
What is the best football league going? Oh, oh wait, four, five, nine, four, five, 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 double five. Oh man, you couldn't write this rubbish. <coughs> oh, Steve, clearing your throat. Yeah, wait for you. It's a morning for co- it is my show, mate. It's a morning. Is it? Yes, it is. It's a morning for coughing, Steve. What would you like to say? Well, Mr. Coulter and the Weasels. Mr. Coulter and the Weasels. I think that's a children's uh, television series, isn't it? I think he means Andy Coulson. Yes, OK, Andy Coulson. Whatever, anyway. Yeah. I mean, surely the party should stand on the laurels of their policies for people to support. You don't need lying cheats to go to media papers and twist all these words around. So let me let me phrase that in a way that's not in any way litigious. You're <laughs> sa- your well, no, because y- y- you know he's, he's still he's still up on in, in, on trial. So we've got to be careful. Uh, you're saying that political parties shouldn't have spin doctors. No, of course they shouldn't, because they're just lying, cheating, twisting people, aren't they? Well, now who the the, 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 the spin doctors or the happen. MPs? No, the, the, the spin doctors. I mean, at the end of the day, if the policies are out there and people look at the policies in the newspaper, wherever, oh, then people will support them. So but, no, you know, you get weasels twisting words and... No, the, no but, 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 but spin doctors don't twist words. They go out... They're, they're PR men. They're PR people for the political parties. Yes, they try and paint a favourable picture, but but that, what's wrong with that? That seems like a perfectly... Yeah, they lie and cheat on other parties. I mean, they twist things around... They slur well, other parties well, they at the don't, same time, don't they? They don't, they don't lie. Fine. Steve, they don't lie. They wouldn't be allowed oh, to God, lie. Of course they lie. Don't give me none of that. Live in the real world. You know they lie. Well, well, you can't say it. Well, what? Oh, oh, ah. I'm part ah, of, yeah, I'm part of the... Uh, I'm part of the, part of the establishment. I'm part of the establishment. OK. <laughs> so why, why, what can't I say, Steve? You, you can't say that they, that they lie. Yeah. Well, and why, ca- why can't I say that? Oh, I don't know, it's in your silly rules book. So much for freedom of speech, eh? Well, well <laughs> so we've had this argument before. Freedom of speech doesn't exist, particularly not on a phone-in show. You know that, Steve. You've been banned before for, for trying to express your freedom of <laughs> yeah, speech. Well, that's not free. Yeah, well, that's, that's what we had two world wars for, to speak our mind. No, you no. You can't speak your mind. Well, you can't speak your mind. The reason you got banned is because you use bad language, right? Yeah. And you understand why you can't have bad language, Yeah. On the radio, yeah, right? Yeah, a, and you understand, you understand, so you understand why you can't have bad language, you also understand why you can't libel people on the radio, don't you? Well, yeah, I saw. OK, yeah. OK, well, OK, that's good enough for me. So that proves there is no such thing as free speech, particularly on a phone and radio show. Well, maybe you want to do it after 10 o'clock at night. You, and still, wouldn't be, like you still wouldn't be able to libel people, <laughs> and you still wouldn't be able to swear. No, I'm not libeling and, anyone. I was just calling them lies and cheats. No, 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 but I'm saying... That. No, oh, for goodness sake, Steve, he's not listening to me. I'm not saying he was libeling anybody. I'm just saying even after 10, the rules are different for radio as they are to TV. Even after 10, I've done shows after 10, you're still not allowed to swear. And guess what? You're still not allowed to libel people. You're still not allowed to say such and such is a murderer and a rapist when they're not, because that's the law of the land. That's, you know, that's a good thing that we've got. Thank you, Steve. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Now, the University of Bedfordshire has been banned from sponsoring new overseas students as nearly 50,000 immigrants are suspected of fraudulently obtaining English language certificates to get a UK student visa. Two private colleges in Luton, Br- uh, Britain College and IIM Bedford, are among 57 colleges to have had their licences to sponsor foreign students suspended. Uh, The National Union of Students has described it as the biggest shock to international education since that their scandal with the London Metropolitan University. Catherine Boyle joins me now. Catherine, what do we know so far? Yesterday afternoon, the Immigration Minister, James Brokenshire, made a statement to the Commons and he said organised criminals were behind a scam which was first revealed on the BBC's Panorama programme in which foreign students were able to cheat their way through language tests. You may remember it involved a company called Educational Testing Services, or ETS. Now, in some of their exams, invigilators read out the answers for written exams. Oh, I'm so sorry that's made me laugh. Wow, gosh. Okay. okay. While oral tests were completed by people with good English posing oh, as candidates, dear. Mr. Brokenshire said 29,000 test results were invalid and 19,000 were questionable. Okay, so, so that's that. But how does this involve the University of Bedfordshire and other colleges in Luton? Well, a number of colleges and universities have been investigated for their failure to make sure foreign students they've sponsored meet the required standards to qualify for their visas. As a result, one university in Wales called Glendower and 57 private colleges have had their licences to sponsor students suspended. Two of those private colleges, the ones you mentioned there, Mm. IAM Bedford and Britain College, they're based in Luton. And director of the IAM Bedford, Mustafa Mohammed, told us he was surprised. It is um, very surprising that uh, we receive, because we've been very compliant with all the rules and regulations of the UKBA. And... um, um, when we got the information about the English language testing, we have we have stopped taking all the students, 
and in the last audit we had on the um, first week of this month um, we went through um, very well in the audit and we didn't have any issues no nothing has been flagged up so i'm really surprised with the news that was Mr Mohammed talking to you and Duncan. He told us he'll challenge the decision and says they will lose all business and in the future of their 60 students lies in tatters. Um, the University of Bedfordshire and the University of West London are no longer allowed to sponsor students pending further investigations, which will decide whether they too should be suspended. What has the University of Bedfordshire said about this? Let's just remember how big this university is. It's got 25,000 students Gosh. based on six campuses in Luton and Bedford. Now, in a statement, the university say they've ordered all their current students. They also emphasise that their licence to recruit students from overseas is not suspended, but is just paused pending a full audit, which they're expecting shortly. There's a difference between pausing and suspending? OK. Apparently right. so. OK. They say they're confident that this will demonstrate the robustness of their procedures. Uh, and finally, what has the uh, National Union of Students said? Well, we were due to speak to them, and then they pulled out the programme, but they did send oh. us a statement, um, and it's rather a lengthy one. Uh, so I'll give you the... Um, the edited highlights. This is the biggest shock to international education since London Met. That's referring to a London Metropolitan University scandal that we yes. referred to earlier. It's appalling that international students continue to be used as a scapegoat by politicians who seem either incapable of understanding or are simply uncaring about the impact of their decisions on individuals, universities and the UK economy. The students who've been affected by this decision came to the UK in good faith, expecting to get a qualification and a better future, and will have spent tens of thousands of pounds on their education. It's crucial that their situation is fully considered and the government supports any students impacted by this situation. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Bones has been sending me abusive emails. Scoins is emailing me. Well, dot, 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 it starts, OK. Well... You did actually say athletes. Sir Roger Bannister was a doctor. So were loads of rugby players. And loads of them were lawyers too. So watch it. OK, well, Sir Roger Bannister was like years ago. And let's be honest, he was rubbish. Brian Moore went to my university. He used to come back. Brian Moore looks like an absolute beast. He was an England rugby player. No, he's he's got about three teeth. He's a cleaner or something? He's a lawyer. Well, I mean, you say that. He's an amazing brain. You say that. Uh, Sir so Roger Bannister was years ago and was rubbish. He could only do a mile in just under four minutes. We can do it much faster than that these days. Um, and, uh, OK, all right, all right, Scoins, all right. Uh, TCA's clever. You just Googled that. No, I wanted to check it was the right fella. OK, right. Football players definitely thick. No. Yes. No. Ian, uh, says Jill, Ian Dowie is an ex-Luton player and football manager. He did sign his first... He didn't sign... He did sign his first contract until he obtained his master's degree. Steve Koppel has a degree in economics. Greek player Socrates is a qualified doctor. This is the thing. Loads, nearly every Greek you meet is a qualified doctor. Does that just mean they've gone to university? No, 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 no. Italy it does, I think. No, they've got, um, they've got, they're, they're all doctors, like proper medical doctors, but there's, there's no work for doctors over there. So they, so they, they kind of go and, there are so many doctors who are cleaners and work in um, fat boys. Yeah, there's a, there's a Greek food chain called Fat Boys. Wow. Uh, because there's no room for doctors. Or oh, they come over here. Greek player Socrates is a, is a qualified doctor. Frank Lampard has one of the highest Mensa IQs ever. Mensa counts for nothing, Jill. Mensa does not mean you're intelligent. I've done those tests. Yeah. I think they let you pass it so you um, join. I mean, I am yeah. very intelligent, obviously, but I think they make you feel more intelligent so you'll join. Oh, we're late! Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The M1 London bound, heavy going between Junction 11 for Dunstable and 9 for Redbourne. Also on the speed sensors, the A1M southbound, looking busy now around Junction 7 for Stevenage. On the sensors in Kings Langley, those queues are building up as you approach the M25. Public transport all looking good with no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Alice. We've got a text on footballers not being thick. Pete in Dunstable says, You're wrong about all footballers being thick. Frank Lampard has a higher IQ than Carol Vorderman. The IQ counts for nothing. It's an inte- it's just a made-up thing. It doesn't mean you're intelligent, even though it's an intelligent quotient. I know, but... 
717. It's Wednesday, the 25th of June. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. The University of Bedfordshire has been banned from taking overseas students while an investigation is carried out into allegations of fraud in the student visa system. Two private colleges in Luton have had their licences suspended. A man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the body of an 82-year-old woman was discovered yesterday lunchtime at a house in Stony Stratford. And in sport, football's world-governing body, Tifa... Tifa? Yeah, we get it. Tifa have opened disciplinary proceedings against Luis Suarez after more biting allegations, hence the joke Tifa... You wrote the joke and it's died on its backside. Yeah, there's a reason I didn't say it out loud. You did say it. It popped out and I edited myself. Thank you very much. BBC Three Counties Radio. Always awkward when things pop out. BBC Introducing. Last weekend, BBC Introducing put on the biggest show it's ever done. We brought you 24 gigs in 24 hours. Recorded across beds, hearts and bucks with artists such as Luke Pickett, Alex Bay and Natasha North. To hear all the performances and watch the videos, go to facebook.com slash bbc3cr. BBC Introducing 24 gigs in 24 hours. BBC Introducing. <laughs> Ian, hey. you were interested in the career of Car- Clark Carlyle. I've got a Clark Carlyle story as well, but carry on. Excellent. Well, yep. it's a bit of a sore point around these parts. Oh. Because he was a Watford player Watford. and he went to Luton on loan. Oh. You don't cross the line. He also played for Queen- the Queen's Park Rangers. He did play for the Queen's Park Rangers. Scott has tweeted me, I can only read some of this story. No, don't read any of it. I can read it. I just have to drop... I, uh, I, I, I cannot use the last word. Oh. You know the, the worst swear in the world? Yes. Bear that in mind. Oh, no. When I, when I go beep, that's the word. Scott says, I met Clark Carlisle in a pub in Ealing. I asked him to sign my playoff final ticket, which he did with rock and roll, you beep. <gasps> that's intelligence, is it? That's intelligence. Well, I've heard you say worse and you're quite bright. I don't... <laughs> Uh, I don't say. I don't say. You've not heard me say that word, have you? Oh, Justin, you're right. Yeah, no, boss, you're do, right. Do you need some help? No, no, I'm fine, boss. Everyone's coughing on air this morning. Mm. It's uh, it's the thing to do. It's do, sexy. do you need me to turn your fader down? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> sexy <laughs> coughing. You yeah. sure? No, I'm fine, boss. I'm cool. Clark Carlisle. What do we know about him? Clark Carlisle. Uh, Clark, absolute legend. Uh, played for uh, both Watford and Luton. Uh, tra- yeah. tra- so a traitor to the cause. <laughs> not at all. He's actually um, a very, very intelligent man. The, the most intelligent footballer ever, in Ke- actual fact. Kelly's got a question. Mm. Is he related to Belinda? No, no. Robert? No. Spelt slightly different, I believe. OK, all right. That's, yeah. I'm glad we've established that. Yeah, sure. And, of course, there are exceptions that prove the rule, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but most football players are thick. No, yeah. no they're not, actually. No, uh, no, uh, no, no, oh, no, no, mate, no. come on. They're thick blokes who've been given a load of money. Just because somebody's got loads of money, why are they thick? No, no. Justin, yeah, again, you're bringing money into it, Justin. You see? You're not listening. You failed. You're, no, you failed because you've not listed. Okay, listened. Go. Okay. There are. Let they me, are just, just listed. Yeah. They are just. Is it true you fancy Clark Carlisle, Kath? I admire his mind. Okay. Right. They are thick people who've been given lots of money. Right. What did she say then, Kaz? She said, oh, he's fit. Oh, Catherine! <laughs> he's a good-looking guy. Does it sound like the sort of thing I would say? Yes, it does. He's you... a very handsome man. I saw him once in Starbucks in London Cole, and he had quite a long chat with him. He's a very handsome man. OK, all right. Well, I wait 459 four, double, five, five, double, five. All football players, I think. So, again, it's a, this is turning into uh, talk sport, isn't it? Yeah, but again, why, look, why are you bringing money into it? Why can't you just say all footballers are thick instead of saying all footballers are thick because they've been given lots no, of money? No, no, Justin, were you... That's what you just no, said. No, I didn't. Will you listen? Okay, let me listen again. Go on. OK, go. listen for the... Th- oh, he's fit, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he's on countdown in that picture, so he must be clever. Listen to what I'm saying, right? It's the yeah. third time I'm saying it. Oh. Try and listen to what I'm saying. You're like one of those idiots that phones me up to have a go at me yeah. and then puts the phone down. <laughs> except you contractually are not allowed to put this line down. Yeah, true, true. All football players, there are exceptions, all football players are thick people... Yeah. Who've been given too much money. Now, the money... What's, what's money got to do with The it, money doesn't make them thick. But it's a description. You, but why can't you just say all football <laughs> players, with an exception, are thick? What's money got to do with it? 
All right. Am I, am I missing the point here? <laughs> you are missing the point, mate. I mean, are you a football player? No. It's like I'm arguing with Wayne Rooney <laughs> or Alan Shearer or something. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. What do you mean? I don't get it. It's got a green top yeah. on and you're saying it's milk. <laughs> How can you have green milk? Justin, all football players are thick. Yes. I'm going to have a cough now. But that's not what you've called in about, <laughs> sir. <laughs> is it? Hang on. Can, can we just go back to this? Just just one last time. Oh, please, please. please. Just, just explain to me why pretty much all football players, in your opinion, are thick. Why are they all thick? Because they're stupid. What? Do, what, what why are they stupid? They're... Th- they're not, they're you're, you're under pressure here. Boss. I'm not you're in under the corner, pressure. You can't I'm, get out. I'm not, I'm not under pressure. Why are they thick? Have you ever seen the football player being interviewed? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. There's, that's why they're thick. Oh, you know, we did really well, but we could have done better. And uh, I know we lost, but uh, it was a good game. I think you should give them more credit, actually. For what? For what? A lot of football players, OK, you get the odd one who goes and wastes all his money on, on gambling. What's money got to do with it, Justin? Okay. Why okay. are you bringing money into it? <laughs> are you saying they're thick because they got money? No, no. But, but in, in this particular case, I'm going to make a relevant point. A, num- a number of them will invest their money wisely. Wisely. Okay, so when their careers yeah, come to no, an no, end, no, no, when their careers no, come no, to an end, no, no, no. they will have they a long, successful life. Not one football player invests their money wisely. Not one. What, Robbie Fowler? Not one invests it wisely. Who is a property yeah. legend, yeah. He, who is going to be in Buckinghamshire very soon, talking about how he has made millions on property. Take that back. No, I won't take it back, because he's not invested his money wisely. What, into property? Will you let me finish the sentence, Just? Okay, yeah, go on. He's not invested his money wisely. His financial advisor has invested his money wisely. He's just splashed out a load of dough on getting a bloke to deal and write his checks. Well, isn't that better than splashing a load of cash down the bookies? Well, yeah, but... He's, yeah, but, he's used his brain. Yeah, there you go, he's well, got a great brain. No. Well done, Robbie. No, he's not. Fair play, Robbie. His, his dad said... Yeah. <laughs> Robbie... <laughs> don't waste that money. I need to say something very rude then. Yeah. Don't throw that money away. You need to get a financial advisor. Oh, thanks, Dad. All right, I'll do that. And then he's gone and got one. And the financial advisor... We can all pay someone to look after our money. That doesn't take intelligence. That's that's using your brain. No, it's not. Okay, you are using an expert in that field to invest your money. That, I would say, is very, very clever. Well done, Rob. But, Justin, you've not called in about that. No. What have you called in for, sir? Uh, Suarez. Ah, oh, the, 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 the saviour yes. of football. Yeah. <laughs> you genuinely believe this as well, don't you? You're listening to Talk Sport. <laughs> yes, it's the, he's the saviour of football. He's, he's piqued my interest in a tournament that, that um, was <clears throat> uh, was dull. Uh, the man's an absolute fool. He really is. He's um, a genius when it comes to putting the ball in the back of the net, but uh, biting people. Wow. Um, it's the third time he's done it, and he should be getting, hopefully, uh, a lengthy ban. We've been talking about that this morning. We've been talking about who was the last person you've actually bit. Um, you've also been talking as well about things that you've eaten by mistake. Yep. Well, uh, Ian, I've been out into the streets this oh. morning and done pretty much everything in one go here. Uh, here's what people had to say. I thought it was disgusting, mate. He wants banning. For how long? Forever. Forever? Yeah, a bit. bit harsh, isn't it? Get rid of him. OK. And when was the last time you bit somebody? I uh, bit an apple last night. That's about it. When was the last time you, you bit something by mistake? The apple last night. I don't like fruit. Thank you very much. Take care. <laughs> Dominic, should this man be banned for a very long time now? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Come on, explain yourself. Well, he's a great player. Um, looking at looking at it myself, I don't think uh, he should be banned for a very long time, no. Brad, Suarez. Yeah. Talk to me. Well, I think he should be banned for two years, like I said on the radio earlier. Definitely. You can't, if you've done it once, or you've done it twice mm. before, I think you've done it a third time. That's it, I think you should be banned, definitely. That was me, by the way, who said that about two years on the radio. Yeah. So, so you agree, which is great. Yeah. Uh, when was the last time you bit somebody? Uh, at a Halloween party. What? At a Halloween party, yeah. <laughs> I bit some bird in the neck. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Was she seriously injured? Uh, yeah, she was a bit, yeah. But she got over it in the end. What happened to you then, madam? You've, uh, you've eaten something by mistake, bitten into something. Tell us your story. I was just um, eating a chicken curry. Well, I thought it was chicken gar- curry. It turned out to be goat. Um, and obviously p- parts of it are darker. And I thought it was just part of the meat. It was part of the bone. So it got stuck in my throat. It was, nice. was it an experience which still haunts you today? Not really. It just makes me more careful like, when I'm eating yeah. curry <laughs> in particular. <laughs> As you're thinking you're eating chicken and it's goat. Yes. And when was the last time you bit somebody? 
Um, I think I was doing a bit of my brother's back, apparently. I don't bite people. Is he still scarred? No, it wasn't that bad. He should be barred. He should be disqualified. Ten games, maybe 12. Yeah, he's already got ten oh, games. Dear. Yeah, ten games last time. Are you honestly telling me, though, you've never bitten anybody? Uh, in passion, yeah, but no, nothing else. <laughs> I'll beat some bird at Halloween party. Yeah. Jeez. We do find him on the streets. Don't you just. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course he shouldn't be banned. Um, he, he should be applauded. We should <laughs> carry him around as man of the tournament. Uh, and we should celebrate uniqueness, individuality, and a certain... Well, he's got spunk, hasn't he? Let's celebrate no, the spark no. that is Suarez. You will find the odd Liverpool fan in this particular part of the world. Why they support Liverpool if they're living in beds, hearts and bucks, I don't know. Clearly not their local team. Who, who will say, do you know what? Oh, it was a mistake. Oh, get off his back. He's such a great player. No! Ban him. Ban him for life. Get Just, him out of the game. All right, mate, calm down. Let's let's find out if people uh, agree with you. 08459 455 555 is the telephone number. Should Suarez be banned from football? Genuinely, I think he's made it exciting. It's we don't have any characters in sport, really. We want someone... It, it, I was listening to motor racing the other day. God, there's a dull sport. 71 laps around a track. Flip it, neck. Suarez should be celebrated and applauded. I'm not saying, you know, d- 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 not necessarily the best um, uh, the inspiration for children, but still. 08459 455 555. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the speed sensors in Chesant, the A10 southbound, heavy going now as you approach Waltham Cross with some queues building at the moment. And in Kings Langley, we have got queues as you approach the M25 from the Hemel Hempstead turn-off. Then on the M25 itself, the anti-clockwise carriageway, very slow between Junction 21 for the M1 and 20 for Kings Langley. Also struggling between Junction 17 for Maple Cross and 16 for the M40. The M1 London bound, slow going between Junction 11 for Dunstable and 9 for Redbourne. Public transport, no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 7.30. I'm Simon Oxley. The director of a private college in Luton whose licence to take overseas students has been suspended says he will contest the decision. The University of Bedfordshire has been banned from taking overseas students while an investigation is carried out into allegations of fraud in the student visa system. A man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the body of an 82-year-old woman was discovered yesterday lunchtime at a house in Stony Stratford. The 48-year-old man was arrested later yesterday afternoon. And bosses at Yarl would have admitted that 10 staff have been dismissed from the Bedfordshire Immigration Centre following allegations of improper sexual contact with female detainees. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Football's world governing body FIFA have opened disciplinary proceedings against Luis Suarez after more biting allegations. The Liverpool striker appeared to bite an Italian defender during Uruguay's win over Italy, but says he did nothing wrong. These situations happen on the pitch. We were both inside the box, he pushed me with his shoulder and so on and so forth. And, well, I was also hit in the eye. These are things that happen on a football pitch and you shouldn't keep talking so much about that. England's players are flying home after finishing their World Cup campaign with a nil-nil draw against Costa Rica. His manager, Roy Hodgson. I don't think that any fair-minded person would suggest that the team did not show the right spirit, did not show the right commitment and that we gave at any time any impression that we had nothing to play for. And I think our fans obviously appreciated that. Last night, Colombia, who were already through, beat Japan 4-1 and Greece beat the Ivory Coast 2-1 with a late penalty to make it to the last 16 for the first time. England's cricketers lost a dramatic second test to Sri Lanka as James Anderson was out off the penultimate ball at Headingley after surviving 20 overs. Despite another serious defeat, coach Peter Moores is backing under-fire captain Alistair Cook. As a captain, yeah, it's been a really tough seven or eight months. Um, but I think he, he'll have said tonight, he'll say to people, he's in for the long haul, he wants to build a team in his 
you know, with his stamp on it. And I think my job's to help him do that. In the Minor Counties Championship at High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire did manage to hold out for a draw against Cambridgeshire, scoring 426 for eight with Rob White, 185 not out. And Andy Murray is back in action at Wimbledon today. The defending champion will play the Slovenian Blaz Roller in the second round. BBC Three Counties News and Sport. The next full bulletin is at eight. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. I'm being swallowed by a boa constrictor. I'm being swallowed by a boa constrictor. I'm being swallowed by a boa constrictor. And I don't like it very much. Oh, no, oh, no. He swallowed my toe, he swallowed my toe. Oh, gee, oh, gee. He's up to my knee, he's up to my knee. Oh, fiddle, oh, fiddle. He's reached my middle, he's reached my middle. Oh, heck, oh, heck. He's up to my neck, he's up to my neck. Oh, dread, oh, dread. He swallowed my... It's the uh, Luis Suarez story in song form there. 08459 455 555 is the phone number. Senior staff responsible for the Yarlswood Detention Centre near Bedford say a nurse who allegedly sexually assaulted a female resident has not been dismissed. It's emerged that ten members of staff have been dismissed from Bedfordshire's Yarlswood Immigration Centre following allegations of inappropriate behaviour towards detainees. The centre's operator, Serco, appeared before the Home Affairs Select Committee yesterday. Their representative, James Thorburn, insisted the company set high standards for its staff and apologised for the instances where they'd fallen short. Serco won't talk to us, but the chairman of the Home Affairs Select Committee, Keith Faz, has been kind enough to come on the show. Good morning to you, Keith. Good morning. Fallen short seems, uh, well, something of an understatement. Well, of course, this is... uh... Um, the way in which people try and um, establish that they have done something wrong. They can't come out and speak in clear and precise terms as you and I might do. Uh, This is their language. This is their way of saying that they had not uh, done what they were expected to do. Um, I welcome the apology that Serco has given. Uh, We were interested to hear the figures about 10 people being dismissed. But I think the feeling of the committee was very much that if allegations are made by the detainees in the Arlswood, that those who are being uh, the subject of investigations ought not to be there while the investigation is proceeding. And I think that is the best way and the most effective way of uh, of proceeding. We heard a clip uh, uh, earlier on uh, where you mentioned a gentleman who'd said to a lady uh, something along the lines of, you don't need treatment, you need my penis. Uh, And you pushed Mr Thorburn and found out that that gentleman was still working there. That seems highly inappropriate, doesn't it? Well, I would have thought so. Of course, the, the, they have the facts and they have the circumstances. I had a quote. But since he defined defined uh, uh, sexual allegations as being very broad, that has to include statements of that kind. And he accepted that if someone made a statement of that kind, that would be included in his broad definition of what uh, inappropriate sexual conduct would be. And therefore, if indeed that was said... It sounds like a very uh, um, provocative thing to say. I would have thought that action ought to have been taken, but they admitted that they're all still working there, uh, which is which was a surprise to the committee. But they promised to send us their report, and I think what we need to do is look carefully at their report. We'll obviously publish it. Uh, so people will have a chance of, of knowing about these things themselves. Is this a report that Serco have carried out themselves? Mm, which you... contain that quote. Right, OK. Do, do, do you think that will give the full and honest picture? Do we not need to send an independent body in there? Well, there is an independent body in there. One of the things they said was that the, they are subject to quite strict regulation. The Home Office is actually in the premises. So uh, the, the independent inspector has the right to go in there. We are going to visit very shortly... So there's, there's great opportunities for us to be able to, to look at this. We're not just accepting people. They come along to the select committee and they say, everything's all right in the garden. We go, oh, thank you very much. Please call again. Um, we do look at this very carefully. And uh, as far as Serco is concerned, because, of course, they've got a bad record in terms of public sector contracts, they are 
currently being investigated by the SFO. Uh, they've had to pay back £68 million because they overcharged the Ministry of Justice. So they're not, um, you know, uh, quite coming out of the stable of an organisation that has been endorsed by Mother Teresa. Uh, they've got form. And therefore, we need to pursue this further, uh, uh, though it was good to have them before us and good to get those admissions mm. of liability, which I thought was the right thing to do in the circumstances. But of course, we're a select committee of parliament. We, we have to pursue this. Did you get the impression that Mr. Thorburn and Serco were taking it seriously? They, they, he did say something along, along the lines of, we have 30,000 women and 31 complaints of improper sexual contact. It sounds almost as if he's, he, he's proud of, of, of that record and dismissive. Surely there should be zero complaints. Well, I don't think that we'll ever get an organisation, including Three Counties Radio, uh, or even, you know, the House of Commons, where nobody complains. Uh, we would really be in a very special place. Uh, there are always going to be complaints coming in. It's the way in which you deal with them. Um, I did think that uh, he was trying to make the, the point that, you know, we've got all these people in there, but only uh, a very small number, 31, had complained. The issue is a lot of people don't complain mm. uh, because they don't want to, because they're in detention. So if they feel if they complain that people are going to be even more uh, cruel to them. Uh, so better not say anything. So I don't think the actual level is important. What matters is how you deal deal with them. And I think the feeling of those who are still in Yarlswood and those who speak on their behalf is that they did not deal with them appropriately. I welcome Serco's admission. Uh, I welcome their apology. But we need to look at this report to see how we can take uh, issues forward. I mean, these companies, Serco G4S, are getting, uh, you know, between them, £2.0 billion of your and my money every single year. Of course, there is a duty for them to act properly. And uh, we will pursue this till we get a, an all clear. Finally, Keith, will you be calling the women uh, who are detained at the, the Bedfordshire Centre to hear their side of the story? We will, but of course the better uh, prospect uh, is to, to go ourselves. Uh, so at some stage in the near future, uh, we, we do have uh, much to do on the Home Affairs Select Committee. Um, we, we, we will go to Yarlswood. Yarlswood now has a reputation. And the trouble with um, institutions with a reputation is unless you deal with the reputation and you're seen to be dealing with them in an open and transparent way, then, uh, you know, it does damage, uh, damage you, so we if, will be going. If you go, Keith, and you speak to the women there, do you think you, you'll get an honest answer? Because, as you've, you've kind of hinted at, a lot of these women will, will be scared, won't they? Well, we're not will, but, you know, at the end of the day, we found when we've gone on to visits, people really are quite open with us. I mean, a lot of supporters of the Earls with detainees came along to the Select Committee tomorrow. They were not um, backward in coming forward uh, at the end of the session telling us what questions we ought to have asked. So I'm not sure, I don't think we will have a problem with people okay. telling us what they feel. Maybe one thing that they might do, uh, let me say this finally, is G4S have got body cameras where, you know, their staff walk around with cameras. This may be the best way of ensuring that incidents don't happen. But I'm not sure that the idea of just switching them on when an incident happens is the best thing. You probably need to have them all the time. Keith, nice to talk to you. Appreciate your time. That's the chairman of the Home Affairs Select Committee, Keith Vaz. Uh, we did ask Serco to come on the show. They wouldn't come on yesterday as they were preparing for the uh, investigation. And today they just don't fancy coming on. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. Here's a question to my team of boffins. Oh, they're not here. Ka Kath and Kells will have to do. Where does the... Hello, mate. Where does the annoying phrase, long time no see, come from? Ah, Kelly, long time no see. Well, I don't get why you're so confused by it. Well, why? It, well, Sometimes it, it is. It's been a long time, and you've not seen someone. But so why not say? Haven't Kelly, seen you for a long time. Yeah. Instead of you say, we say long time no see. It's quicker, isn't it? But why? Where? Do, all right. Let's. You, you, okay. That's um, waste of time. Where does the the phrase "look what the cat dragged in" come from? Well, because cats drag things in. Where does the phrase come from? What phrase? I can't hear you. Say anything. If I put it up to the microphone, is that better? That's a gesture. Catherine. Yes. Long time no see. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I just thought I can see you now. No, I'm not saying it to you. I'm asking where does that come from? It sounds like a film or something, doesn't it? No, it, no. 
Tell me then. Why I don't know. I don't know. know. I don't know. Showing I, it again. No, I'm not sure. I don't know. Someone just said. I heard someone say it the other day, and I thought, what stupid phrase. Why? Do, and I, it makes me uncomfortable. Oh, long time no see. Long time no speak. Uh, long time no touch. Why? Where does they it? They say that to you, do they? No. But where? Where? Who was the first person? I see. When I was a kid, I thought it was an. Uh, okay, Ted. Ted we, said it there first. There we go. We got an answer. Yeah. There you go. Everyone happy now? Ted who? Ted. You're making it up. Reeves. Ted Graves. I from thought. Yeah, I uh, thought it was. Um, what are we supposed to call those guys these days? Uh, Native Americans. I thought it was Indians. I thought it was American well, Indians. The shortened st- staccato Long time nature. No how? Yeah, I'm not even sure they said how. How? Then what was that program about? Fred Dine? You're calling Fred Dinage a liar? Maybe in terms dum, of. Dum 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 How? Dum 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 How? You couldn't call a show How now. You have to call it How To or something. Well, they did How To. OK, How Three. Doesn't mm. make any sense. Dum 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 How? Did it? OK, here are the questions. Carol Vorderman was on that, and that fellow with a lisp. Oh, uh, not Neil Buchanan. No. The, the other fella. He married um, a woman who does video games programs. He was, he was a bit of a punk, wasn't he? Yeah. And then he shaved his hair off. Yeah, because he was going bald. It's a lesson for everybody, guys. If you're well, going bald, right thing, then. if you're going bald, shave it off. Don't dip your head in boot polish like that fella we saw in <laughs> town the other day. So these are the questions that I'd like to put out there. Where does uh, "long time no see" come from? And of course, as we all know, anyone who says that or "chow" is um, uh, a, 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 a cheese. I can hear you when you mouth words, Kelly. So our DAB listeners would have got a little blast of that. Great, great news. So where does "long time no see" come from? And do um, American Indians, natives. Native Americans. Oh, dearie me. Native Americans. Do Native Americans say how? Why do people call headphones cans and glasses bins? I don't know. Why are you throwing more stuff into this mix? Here's something. Oh. Right. I don't get the. I don't get African Americans. Why? I just don't get them. What? All of them? No, the term. The whole people. No, I, 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 no the, the term African Americans. Why don't Americans say black people? Is it because of the connotation that they had? You know, they've had a struggle more recently in history. And, D- yeah. You know. so, but you wouldn't say... Do people say African English? No. No. Or, or, African or Europeans. Or, or, black British. Irish. But you, so, so black is still in Irish, there. Irish, German. Yeah. Sorry? But we, that's not helping. But we haven't had, we didn't have the civil rights movement so recent in our history, did we? We didn't have no, but, going but, through different entrances. But, they, but, but, back it, but, but back in those days, in fairness, they wouldn't have been called black people either. They would have been far more derogatory terms mm. used, which, which are terms that we don't use. And again, I've got, I've got issues around that. But uh, it just uh, the, the uh, African American thing, I don't get. It sounds really patronising. Yeah, but they're still working on it, I think. If you're, this is a long shot, right? If you're black and from America and African American, we need two. One for and one again, and we're going to let them fight it out. And whoever, <laughs> last man standing, is the winner. No, I, I don't understand. If someone can, can explain it to me, uh, and whether it's patronising or whether it, 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 it embraces your freedom, I don't know what it does. I don't know what it does. It might be just the least trouble. Yeah, may, uh, well, maybe. I'm sure I don't there have know. been a lot of conversations about it. OK, 08459. Sorry, I'm sorry to just throw that out there. Uh, these thoughts have been in my head. 08459 four double five five double five. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. At the Clop Hill roundabout, all approaches looking very heavy on the speed sensors at the moment. Also, the A1M southbound, very heavy between junction 8 for Hitchin and 7 for Stevenage. In Kings Langley, there are queues approaching the M25, starting around the Hemel Hempstead turn-off. And on the M25 itself, looking very slow between Junction 20 for Kings Langley and 16 for the M40. Public transport, no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Alice, thank you very much indeed. Where's my heads? Where's my heads? There's my... 7.46. It's uh, Wednesday, the 25th of June. <laughs> it was fun, isn't it? Shh, don't tell. 
Uh, it's Wednesday the 25th of June. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. The University of Bedfordshire has been banned from taking overseas students while an investigation is carried out into allegations of fraud in the student visa system. Two private colleges in Luton have had their licences suspended. A man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the body of an 82-year-old woman was discovered yesterday lunchtime at a house in Stony Stratford. And in sport, football's world governing body FIFA have opened disciplinary proceedings against Luis Suarez after more biting allegations. I think he's saving football from tedium. What do you think? 08459 455 555 is the phone number. Let's get the weather. Here's Kate. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. A beautiful start to the day. Blue sky and sunshine and the temperature outside that little bit cooler. It's seeming a bit fresher this morning and that's really what we're hanging on to for the next few days. Although sunshine this afternoon, it will warm up nicely. Still pleasant, just cooler than the last few. We're looking at a maximum of around 20 Celsius. A similar night to the one we've just had overnight tonight. We've got um, some clear spells, perhaps but a little bit of mist developing in the more rural spots. But the wind lies and the minimum temperature 11 Celsius. Another fine dry start tomorrow morning. Sunny spells but a bit cloudier tomorrow afternoon. Maximum temperature 21 Celsius but it should again stay dry and then the change overnight Thursday into Friday. The showers likely to arrive sometime just around midnight and they're going to continue right the way through the weekend. Some heavy perhaps thundery showers and that's your forecast. Roberto Peroni. Gardeners wanting to rid their spring flower beds of snails can ditch the beer traps and eggshells and instead develop a strong throwing arm instead. Weekdays from three. I don't think there's any ethical dilemma about throwing them as opposed to killing them. It's clearly better to throw them. Hertfordshire police are warning drivers to take extra precautions with their vehicles following a rise in the number of cars stolen using specialised hacking equipment. Two thirds of teachers say poor writing has prevented them giving the marks a student truly deserves. Roberto Peroni. I do the animal stories. I also do the space stories, apparently. Weekdays from three on BBC Three Counties Radio. Yeah, my respect, boss, yeah? Maria's in Offley. Good morning, Maria. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Yes, that's better. What, what can we do for you this morning, Maria? Well, I picked up Long Time No See in, in Leeds. Oh, I lived co- there for a while. It comes from Leeds, does and it? And then out of show, uh, and then out of show business. Oh, so is it a Leeds term or a show business term? No, it's a Leeds term. Okay, and what does it mean? Well, it means that um, you've not seen you for a long time, in other words. Okay. Long time, no see. And so when would you use it? When you've, when you've seen, not seen anybody for a long, long time. Okay, so give me give me an example. Give, give, put it in, into context for me. Well, say I've not seen anyone for about two years, and you remember them. Have you been that... in prison? No. Why would you? You've not seen anyone for two years. Because they might have moved away or come back. Okay. That sort of thing. Oh, so you, you're sorry. You're talking about a specific person, not. Yeah. Stop okay. it, you two growling! Stop it! Excuse me, butting in. It's who's growling? It's my. Alibaba, He's, he, he will have a go at my little tiny Pekingese. Now stop it. Is Ali Barber having a go at your little tiny Pekingese? He did do. Can you do any? Um, can you do anything to stop that? I just stop him. Little. Um... Stopped it now. He's wondering what the what the um, Rosanna's doing. Who? Very inquisitive. Yeah. Can you kick them? Pardon? Can you kick them? Oh, I wouldn't kick them, no. I mean, He's getting don't... underneath the trolley now. He's wondering what's under the trolley. Ali Barber's it? underneath your trolley? No, Rosanna is a shih tzu. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's where it comes from. A shih tzu? No, long time no see. It comes like from a shih tzu? I've never met you, long time no see. I've spoken to you on the radio many times. Well, no, but hang on, if I've, if I've never met you... It will be no time, no can, see. Yeah, well, you can you can use it in that context. So I could say well. no time, no see. Yes. Okay. Uh, and so, give me another. It's not ex- foreign. It's it's just one of their sayings well, up north. Well, so, some some Maria might think up north is uh, is a very foreign country. 
Oh. <laughs> Isn't it just? So, so in conclusion, you're saying long time no see comes from American Indians. No, I'm not saying that oh. at all. What? I've, totally missed, I've totally missed the point. So what were you saying? Your shit to and Ali Barber no put me off. That you've not seen them for a long time, in other words. Who? Well, this friend that you meet and you've known them for a long time. Right. And then suddenly they've moved away or gone on holiday. To Leeds. Oh, somewhere, yes. Yeah. Is, yeah. So they're in Leeds mm. and I'm in Luton. Yeah. I'm not going to see them, am I? No, but... Not for a long time. Say, say they... Say they came up to Leeds for a day out or something. No, they they live in Leeds. They live in Leeds. No, say they lived in Luton. No, I'm living in Luton. I don't, but for this purpose of this, I'm living in Luton. They're in Leeds. So when would we say it to each other if we're not seeing each other? It's crazy. Yeah, but supposing they they came to Leeds from Luton. No, they live in in Leeds. And you bumped up, you bumped into them in Leeds. Then you'd say, oh, long time no see, I'm lovely to see you. The, Again, the odds of seeing the odds of bumping into them in Leeds are very slim. Have we prearranged this? Not really, no. So it's just, a, <laughs> just, it's just happened. Making me laugh, you are. That is nuts, <laughs> Maria. When are you going to do some more performing? Well, I've got to go in for my left knee at the moment. Oh, I'm can we come and watch? Thirty first. I I fell because I've got no balance in my left foot. Oh, what? Okay. Yes, because they cut, took the knuckle off at Christmas, and I wasn't exactly told to use the stick, and I didn't realise. Oh, Maria, Maria, Maria! But it's it's cleared up by a friend who painted me straight onto canvas because I'm so vibrant. But of course, I remember and, your um, vibrancy. I'm picking up the vibrancy today when you're telling me about long time no see. Yeah, no. I've been around. <laughs> I, well, Maria, don't put yourself down. I'm sure. Uh, People but think very highly of you. Being, they're moving the big toe, 31st. I've got pre-admission again on the 31st what? of July. They brought the appointment forward. I'm so, I'm so confused, Maria. Sorry, they're moving your big toe to Leeds? No, what? they're moving it because it's been stationary for five years. Where? And I've got no... Since they took the knuckle off, that was my... They took the knuckle of your big toe off? No, the little toe beside the big toe... Because the it little was toe's not beside the big birth, toes. Is there and three... I was getting corns on top. There are three toes in between. A lot of pressure. There are three toes in between. other shoes, and it was hurting me oh. so much I could hardly walk. The sh- it sounds like the, sh- the shoes have been giving you pressure. Yes. Come on, Maria. Put me on. They've done that. Wear they've me instead of those other Christmas. shoes, otherwise I'm going to crush your toes. Like that. And now they're going to no. take the big toe yeah. and put it so I can use it. Put it where the sun don't shine. <laughs> Don't cry. <laughs> well, listen, when when so when your toe are they, are they when your toe is fixed, will yes. you be able to perform and sing again? Yes, and I'll be able to dance. I'll have a bit of I'll have a bit of balance. Ooh. I've got no balance at all at the moment. Could could you give us a snatch now? What of? What's your favorite song to sing? Do you know oh. David do you know David Bowie? Do you know any David Bowie? Do you know David Bowie? Wait a minute. Do you know any David Bowie? Sing through my dreams and once again, softly and secretly. Oh, my dog's joining in. <laughs> Are you there? I was enjoying that. Te- te- They're joining in, the dogs as well. Is that Ali Baba? Tell Ali Baba to That's shut Ali up. Baba. Ali Baba, stop joining in! I couldn't finish it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've made me snot. It's a musical morning. Maria, we will speak Hello. to you again soon. I look forward to hearing more singing from you. You're so vibrant. OK. Thank you, my love. Thank you very much indeed. Well, I've got to do this. <laughs> Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. Gosh. BBC Three Counties Radio. Gosh. thinks that long time no see comes from Leeds. Vibrant Maria. Vibrant Maria, the singer, thinks that long time no see comes from Leeds. No, I think you'll find in Leeds they say, hey up last, where's the bin? Yeah, where's the bin? The bin's over there. Speaking of bins. Richard! 
Yeah, Ian, long time no speak. Hey, where does it get come from, Leeds? Shut that dog up. You'll have to get that. You'll have to get that woman on again. She can really sing. She was great. She was like Mrs. Miller, yeah, but, but not quite as good. Can I have a bit of toe? Because when I was in hospital the other year, yes. and I had an allergic reaction to the drugs, and I got angry and oh, bit of me toes filled. Good morning, off. everyone. Enjoy your breakfast. <laughs> Perhaps they can stick it on. Listen, we can have a whip round. See if we. I reckon if we all scraped off a little bit of toe, Richard, we'd have enough to give you a decent toe. Lovely, lovely. Give you a foot up. Smell. Yes. Anyway, dustbin lids. Oh. What? Anyway, bins, bins, bins. Y- um, let me just hang on. We just have a look through. Hang on. Just looking at the show's notes. Hang on a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We're talking about Yarswood. We're talking about the colleges. We're talking about Suarez. Things you've had in your mouth you shouldn't have had. Mad old women singing. No, we're not talking about bins today, Richard. You are. Kelly wouldn't even know where bins came. The expression. Oh, bins. bins, as in glasses, bins. right. Yes, oh, as yes. Glasses. Yes. Well, I do believe it comes from the old rhyming slang of um, um, dustbin lids. Uh, which was shortened to bins, because the two glasses... OK, so dustbin lids, of course, as we all know, is rhyming slang for kids. So how does that fit in... Well, yeah, it's not glasses, is it? How is bin, dustbin lids kids? No, never. Well, how is dustbin never lids glasses in rhyming you slang? How is you it? just made that up. How is it rhyming slang for glasses? It's bins. Your 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 um your glasses look like a pair of dustbin lids on your eyes. Well, so it's in not. The old days, but that, in, the, in the pre-war days of national health. But that's not glasses. rhyming slang. That's observational you slang. I'm finishing. Let me let me let me just finish. So it was shortened down to bins. Oh, Maria could finish you off. Dust bins. But you said it was rhyming slang, mate. That doesn't rhyme. Well, where was you? Well, it was a bit of an alliteration. Dust bins. There's no dust such bins. thing as alliteration slang, you plum. Plum yourself. Plum you in a minute. Travel news for beds, hards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. In Newport Pagnell, on the speed sensors, London Road looking very heavy as you head towards the M1 at Junction 14. Also on the sensors, between Dunstable and Redbourne, the M5 southbound extremely heavy at the moment, especially as you approach the Luton Road in Mark Yate. The M1 itself, London bound heavy going between Junction 10 and 9 for Redbourne. The M25 anti-clockwise also struggling between Junction 20 for Kings Langley and 16 for the M40. Public transport, no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Deary me, I mean, I don't know if I can be bothered anymore. So where does the term bins come from, as in glasses? Does anyone know? It's not dustbin lids. By the way, saucepan lids are kids. I, I, uh, yes, I do know that. Thank you. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's eight o'clock, I'm Simon Oxley. The headlines, Luton College to oppose visa ban. Man arrested after 82-year-old woman found dead in Milton Keynes. And former Watford boss says Luis Suarez needs professional help. BBC Three Counties Radio. The director of a private college in Luton who's licensed to take overseas students has been suspended, says he will contest the decision. Two colleges in the town have had their licences suspended. And the University of Bedfordshire has been banned from taking overseas students while an investigation is carried out into allegations of fraud in the student visa system originally highlighted by the BBC's Panorama programme. Labour's immigration spokesman David Hanson says there are serious questions for the Home Office. The scale of the abuse today at some 48,000 students as a minimum is truly shocking and will leave many questions open as to why this took the BBC to find out this problem rather than the Minister's own department. A man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the body of an 82-year-old woman was discovered yesterday lunchtime at a house in Milton Keynes. Police officers found the body at the house in Latimer in Stony Stratford just after 12.30. They've described the death as suspicious but say it's an isolated incident. A 48-year-old man was arrested later yesterday afternoon. Bosses at Yarlswood have admitted that 10 staff have been dismissed from the Bedfordshire Immigration Centre following allegations of improper sexual contact with female detainees. 
James Thorburn from Serco told MPs there had been 31 cases out of 30,000 women detained at Yarlswood in the last seven years. The Labour chair of the Home Affairs Committee, Keith Vaz, told this programme they would be taking the matter further. We are going to visit very shortly. So there's, there's great opportunities for us to be able to, to look at this. We're not just accepting people that come along to the select committee and they say everything's all right in the garden. We go, oh, thank you very much. Please call again. For a select committee of parliament, we, we have to pursue this. Labour says David Cameron has more questions to answer following the conviction of his former chief spin doctor, Andy Coulson, on phone hacking charges. A jury will resume deliberations this morning on allegations that Coulson, the former editor of the News of the World and the paper's former royal editor, Clive Goodman, paid police officers for two royal directories. The veteran Hollywood actor Eli Wallach has died at the age of 98. He was the bandit leader in The Magnificent Seven and also starred in The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. In sport, football's world governing body FIFA have opened disciplinary proceedings against Luis Suarez after more biting allegations. The Liverpool striker appeared to bite an Italian defender during Uruguay's win over Italy. Former Watford and England manager Graham Taylor says Suarez needs professional help. He's got a problem, full stop. Everybody should recognise this and he needs, as far as I'm concerned, he, he does need some help outside. You, you don't do these kind of things. You could see himself in his reaction. He recognised what he'd done again. And England's players are flying home after finishing their World Cup campaign with a nil-nil draw against Costa Rica. The weather dry with sunny spells but not as warm. Cloudier this afternoon, a maximum temperature 20 degrees Celsius and you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. It's happy, it's positive, there's lots of people, there's lots of things going on. It's just charming. It's all about where you live. It's still got a real community, you know. And all this week we're featuring Wellin and Digswell. It's a very sociable place. But everything you're likely to want, cafes, restaurants. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. Cafes and restaurants, you say? Right, suddenly it's four minutes past eight. The sun's still out. Let's can, can we finish early and go and can we do the rest of the show in the in the, the field? Can we do that? Can we do the rest of the show in the field, please? Out in the playground. It's four minutes past eight. It's Wednesday, the twenty-fifth of June. Lots coming up in the last hour of the show, including bogus student suspicions in Bedfordshire. Where on earth does, do, do we say bins? Why do we say bins instead of glasses? Long time no see. And let's be honest, Suarez has made a rather dull football tournament quite exciting with his naughty behaviour. Hasn't he? 08459 four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. But first, the University of Bedfordshire has been banned from sponsoring new overseas students as nearly 50,000 immigrants are suspected of fraudulently obtaining English language certificates to get a UK student visa. Two private colleges in Luton, Britain College and IIM Bedford, are among 57 colleges to have had their licences to sponsor foreign students suspended. The National Union of Students has described it as the biggest shock to international education since the scandal with London Metropolitan University. Well, I'm joined in the studio by Luton South MP Gavin Shuka. Gavin, nice to see you. What's your reaction to, to this news? Well, obviously, it's a massive shock. Mm. Um, if you think about the University of Bedfordshire, for example, about 15% of a large university number of students are coming in from overseas. And I suppose what the government's got to do is they've got to get a grip on the situation They've identified that there's one provider of English language tests who may have been uh, offering those tests not up to the standard that they should be. And so the Home Office, quite rightly, is asking the question, have universities and colleges been targeted by this firm or by students? Um, I'll just say, though, I spoke um, with the University of Bedfordshire last week before this all broke about the situation. Their conduct on this has been fantastic. They've done internal audits to mm. see whether or not this is an issue and whether or not they've been targeted. At the moment, that looks pretty good. And so I would expect in due course that actually they'll restore the situation back to normal and they'll be able to carry on as, as before. So the University of Bedfordshire has, has been suspended from taking foreign students. They call it a pausing, but I, 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 there's not really much difference. Um, while this investigation takes place, is that right? Well, they've been suspended from issuing new, uh, okay. new students and new applicants. Yep pending the outcome of an audit. Now, they've done their own internal audit that...
basically shows there isn't really a problem there. But obviously they've got to go through the due mm. diligence. Um, it's also interesting to note other universities have not received this clear bill of health mm. um, in the same way that University of Bedfordshire have. For example, universities with London sub-campuses, universities in Wales have all been suspended uh, properly as opposed to just a pause, which is uh, what we've got here in Luton. And so the problem, uh, if foreign students who don't speak English very well or at all, getting a certificate saying their English is great, they're fine, they can understand all the written work, all of the oral work, that they're fine to come and study. Yeah, and obviously that's a massive problem, isn't yeah. it? Because if you arrive in country to do a degree and you can't read or write in English, that's going to be exposed as a problem fairly early on. Mm. Um, now, you might suggest that some training providers wouldn't worry about that. They'd be happy to take the fees and continue as normal. But a university like the University of mm. Bedfordshire that's going up the league tables, that is expanding massively in the sector, can't do that, uh, which is why they've been so quick in o- order to um, identify any See, problems. part of me thinks that the, the, the universities, the, the legit ones like the University of Bedfordshire, mm. are, are, are being punished unfairly because... Can they be expected to... What, what are they being asked to do? Go and do, a, do a, a test with every foreign student? Surely if they're getting a certificate that says they can speak English, they have to take that on face value, don't they? Well, this is the problem of government, isn't it? They, you do too little mm. to actually look at a problem. The problem gets exposed, in this case, by BBC's Panorama, mm. and then you massively overreact at the other end. Now, there's got to be a, a middle place, and I'm sure we'll get there in time, whereby they're able to identify problems in one area and... Uh, institutions like the University of Bedford that have done everything right. Uh, at the moment, though, we've got to grind this out over the next few weeks until they receive that clear bill of health, which mm. I fully expect them to do. Uh, and there are also smaller independent uh, uh, colleges, mm. th- th- a number of whom I'm sure are reputable places and offer excellent, uh, you know, have high standards. But there are some of them, and you walk past them and you think, well, that, that's a college? That's just, a, you know, a, a dark stairway up to the third floor. The, 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 there must be places who are, who are happy to take the money they get for these foreign students, no questions asked. How do we stop that? Well, certainly, I think that was very much the case in recent years. Uh, this government, rightly, actually, they should be lauded for it, have worked hard to um, close down bogus colleges or mm. so-called bogus colleges. Now, time will tell whether or not these institutions were aware of the problem with the certificate that was being issued, or they weren't. Um, that's the government's job to get to the bottom of it. But essentially, you know, it's easy to tar all international students with the same brush. By and large, the vast majority of international students come here because they know they can get a fantastic yeah. education. And actually, I think, you know, everyone that we educate is UK exports. Mm. You know, it's, it's a fantastic part of our economy. It's something we do really well in the UK and we shouldn't tire everyone the same brush. What, do we know what's going to happen to all the foreign students who, who, who've paid significant amounts of money, thousands of pounds to study here and now can't? Uh, no, we don't. Um, actually, we were pressing the government on this in the House of Commons yesterday. Um, they need to obviously find a route through for these students. There is at least a question around, well, if they were incorrectly issued a certificate at the start, actually having lived in country for a period of time? Has their English improved? Mm. Has the standard and the quality of what they're doing got any better? If so, then I'm sure there's a process. If not, that is a real issue on the hands of the government. Um, What are they going to do with students that shouldn't be here, who have essentially bought their way into the country? Mm. Um, You know, they've got to come up with some answers on this. And finally, there will be some people listening saying, well, hang on, why are we getting so excited about foreign students? Foreign students do generate a lot Mm. of money for colleges, don't they? It is kind of a business proposition for these places. Yeah, absolutely. And and actually, you know, thinking about here in my hometown, Luton, you know, you go out and you meet international students, I do it as part of my job. I'm hugely impressed by the contribution they make. They're Mm. smart, they're ambitious, they want to work in fields that we wouldn't necessarily otherwise do. You know, they make a major contribution. If we're talking about the standard of written English uh, and spoken English, we could actually apply that across the board, not just to international students. Mm. We all know there are students that are leaving school and college even still who don't have the right qualifications, the right skills mixed to be able to go and do this. So if we've got that focus, then great, let's apply it. But let's not get this one issue with international students. And the University home. of Bedfordshire is doing, doing well at the moment. You know, this, you're, you're right. Let's hopefully they, they can get through this investigation. They can sort this out, clear out any mess they need to and, and carry on, you know, the, with the good work they're doing. Well, it's worth saying, of course, it's now led by Bill Rammel, who was a hugely successful higher education 
immigration minister, knows the immigration system inside out from his time in government. In a sense, you couldn't have someone better in place uh, to do that. And like I say, um, I've been engaged on the issue. I've been hugely impressed by the contribution that they've made already. You're wearing a T-shirt. Is it still nice out? It's gorgeous. Do you know what? I, I reckon you should bin off the rest of the show. I'm, I'm totally tempted to. We can either play just play like a, an album or see if we can get JVS down early. You've got a box somewhere in, in case, you yeah. know, a member of uh, the Royals, you know... Yeah, we've got the Obit box. We've yeah. got the Obit box all ready to go. Well, you're not suggesting we play out the tape for Prince Philip, are you? I, <laughs> are you? I, I, mm. Gavin, very nice to see you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. There we go. The weather is nice out there. Can we not go out and do the rest of the show from the car park? Um, I don't think this cable's long enough. Where's the... Um, we get extension leave. Where's the, uh, the, what, what's the, the truck that we drive? Where's the truck that Justin drives to get us to... Uh, the, the radio car? Yeah. Can we go in that? Oh, man, you're so square. Uh, 08459 four double five five double five. Um, oh, were you considering it? I was considering it? it. I was considering the practicalities. Gaz top. Gaz top. Thank you, Phil. It was gaz top in dum 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 How to. Do you, do you remember Green Gilbert? No. Oh, my goodness. That was, that was on... It was a Saturday morning programme. No. We're doing it. Oh, no, I do... No. Anyway, he was like a, he was a, snotty, a, a snotty, robot, snotty, snotty frog. alien. Yeah, no, that was 90s kids' TV programmes. They don't count. Yes, please, can we do the um, show from the car park? Well, I'd love to. Oh, look, Mum's putting on her other headphones, pretending she's taking a phone call. Look, look. I can set it up for us. Fine, let's go and do it. I'm there. We can do it after we spoke to JVS. OK, fine. Let's go and do it from the car park. I'm there. Fine. It's a, it's a great day. Let's go. 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 Make, it, make it so. Make it happen. Make it happen. I'm on it. All right, nice one. Then we're going to do the rest of the show from the car park. Boom shakalaka. What could possibly go wrong? But Kelly, if we do do it from the car park, you will of course have to stay here to uh, operate the desk. Mm. Yeah? 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 No. Yeah? Okay. Technical question. Yes. Is anyone trying to listen on 95.5 FM? I'm not. I'm doing, the, I'm doing the show. Yeah, OK. I don't, anyone, I don't listen to the station when anyone, I'm not on it. What, what else would I listen to? Anyone There's nothing worth listening apart from between six and nine. Ian Lee, six to nine, doing it fine. First thing in the morning, having your breakfast, then have your breakfast. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, anyone important? I was like, like, um, a... I was like uh, being an American. Having your breakfast, well, have it, break, have it breakfast. On six to nine, on the frequency, 95.8, c- c- capital FM. No. What? Is that not us? No. Oh, gosh. Do you know our frequencies? Absolute Radio. 103.8. Yeah, well done. 95.5. 95.8. C- 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 capital FM. Stop it. What? Stop doing your show reel. <laughs> On air. Please, guys, let me come back to the well-paid sector. Um, but why? What's wrong with it? Uh, Dicky, apparently. <laughs> His show reel or... I think she's ninety five point five. That's that transmitter. It might be a little bit ropey. That transmitter's always going down. What we need to do is we need to climb up there yep. and give it a whack with a spanner. A bang. Yeah. Can we do that? Kelly, you busy? Yep. Do you want me to climb up and have you got a spanner? I've got something you can whack it with. Yeah, that's it. Oh dear. I oh wait four five nine four double five five double five is the telephone number. Let's celebrate the magic of uh, Suarez. He has made a dull football tournament. Exciting. Like this. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the speed sensors in Bedford, the Bromham Road looking very heavy as you head towards the centre of town from Biddenham. Also on the speed sensors, the A1M southbound looking very heavy now between junction 8 for Hitchin and 7 for Stevenage. The M1 London bound, a slow going between junction 10 for Luton and 9 for Redbourne. Also the M25 anti-clockwise, struggling between junction 20 for Kings Langley and 16 for the M40. Public transport, no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much. 8.15, Wednesday the 25th of June. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Luton South MP Gavin Shuka says he expects the University of Bedfordshire to clear its name after allegations of fraud in the student visa system. 
The man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the body of an 82-year-old woman was discovered yesterday lunchtime at a house in Stony Stratford. And in sport, former Watford and England, man- uh, England manager Graham Taylor says Suarez needs professional help after more biting allegations. BBC Three Counties Radio. Imagine a radio station with no music. What's your favourite biscuit? Imagine a programme without conversation. Listen to me, I'm really important. Imagine an afternoon with no local stories. Hundreds of miles away, something really impressive is happening. Sounds pretty boring. Mm. Which is why we have Nick Coffer. BBC Three Counties Radio, Nick Coffer, here until three o'clock. Every weekday he'll bring you the music. Gallagher and Lyle, I want to stay with you. Every breath you take, that's the police. The conversation. His dedication to local musicians has led him to starting Paper Mouth. And the local stories. Today we're going to be looking at the work of the Bedford and Milton Keynes Waterways Trust. Say no to boring afternoons and listen to Nick Coffer. Weekdays from midday here on BBC Three Counties Radio. You're listening to you're listening to Talk Sport, lads, where we like white vans and page three. Whoa. I don't. Clip that and send that to um, the boss of uh, Talk Sport. They might get me a gig there. It's, it's better paid in commercial. Anyway, <laughs> by a lot. By <laughs> you a are lot. aware you're on air, aren't uh, you? It's the BBC. They'll think it's good. It's, it's, it's <laughs> They'll think it's funny. Yeah, it's irony. <laughs> Until I go to Talk Sport and triple my wages. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Good morning, JVS. Good morning. You've had a pop at me for wearing a... An anorak. Yeah. You've you, got an anorak You're on. wearing a jersey, and it's flipping boiling. Look at your jersey. That's, uh, that's my Myers in the bouquet. I, got, I, I don't know the quote, but I, I recognise the voice. It's one of my favourite lines from Keeping Up Appearances. You love that programme. I love oh, it. Oh, it's awful. Really? Do you like Hello, Hello as well? Yes. Oh, dear. Those terrible dated 90s like sitcoms. like Hello, Hello? Because it's not funny. I like Vicky Michelle. It was funny. I like the sexy Nazi. Do you know what I... Uh, the, when I watched... Cause it, uh, some things when I watched Hello, Hello originally yeah. went a bit over my head. The double entendre. Yeah, the double entendre. But I love Lieutenant Gruber and his love affair with Rene. Oh, were they... My, they little, have... my little tank. Was he the bald fella? No, Lieutenant Gruber was the... Uh, he was the Nazi that used to come into Rene's cafe. Yeah. And he obviously was madly in love with Rene. Oh, I didn't... And he used to make all these suggestive comments. You, you need to watch it again. Oh, I you didn't, didn't understand a, it. a homosexual subtext in it's that. Suddenly hilarious. it's very clever. Hilarious. I... The only thing that was funny in a low low was the uh, police officer. Good, good morning. Ma- good morning. The German bummers. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, wasn't that's it? That's funny because I used to be a twelve-year-old boy. Yes, yes, yes that's funny. But that was hilarious. Oh, it was a brilliant show. They should give that guy a spit. Did you like the Britas Empire? Loved the oh, Britas Empire. No. Loved it. <laughs> Excellent. Oh no, you didn't like that. It's just uh, uh, what I don't like. Carol is- used to keep her baby in the cupboard. On reception, how is that not funny? I didn't like lame BBC 1990 sitcoms. Oh, what's wrong with you, I've misery? Got a, I've got a sense of humour. These a... were all funny shows. The oh. British Empire was funny. Oh, dear. Don't dear. you remember Colin, who'd always got bandages and plaster stuck all over him and... Yeah. Weeping boils and things like that. It's funny. Uh, no? No. <laughs> I, don't find, I don't find overacting funny. Uh, oh, you see, I do. Except when you do it. <laughs> Then, <laughs> as, as you do between 9 and 12 yeah, every, every day. day every now, day. listen, this really is... I, I make a joke about talking about... I, I, I've been talking football. You're doing football again. You liked course, it so much the other day. Well, you're doing it again. Of course, well, it's today, one of today's biggest stories, isn't yep, it, really? Yep. This Luis Suarez chap. Yep. I mean, what the hell's wrong with him? Mm. Coming up from nine this morning, I'm going to be asking, how do you think Luis Suarez should be punished? Last night, Uruguay and Liverpool striker Luis Suarez appeared to bite Italian defendo, Giorgio... Defender. What? It's a de- it's a, the position's a defender. What you did s- I say? It's a defendo. Def- no, I didn't. Did I say defendo? Well, I was uh, putting girls. a little bit of Italian on it. You did. Yeah. Um, in Italian, that would show that he was a man... He's really true. He's true tr- fact. But, exactly. I know, but no, he's trying, isn't he, to dig himself out of a hole? He's not even st- started the show on football. And he's embarrassing himself. Giorgio Chiellini. Yes, that's his name. Ooh, um, the defender. Today's papers carry <laughs> carry. Well, if I've corrected you on football knowledge, you're in big trouble. Well, you would have a a defender or a defender. You see, <laughs> just to uh, 
just to depict but their... No one, wants to, no one wants, wants to watch Defender playing. Their gender. Yes. Today's papers carry pictures of the Italian uh, pulling back his blue shirt to reveal a red bruise while Suarez oh. sits on the pitch holding his teeth. Oh. I mean, it's the, most, it's the most peculiar thing, isn't it? Yeah. Even those of us that uh, couldn't care less about football, even the, we yeah. are interested in this exactly. story. Exactly. Short clips of the incident have been posted online and the Italian team are calling on football's world governing body, FIFA, to take action. It's the third time... I know, he's got previous. Suarez has been accused of biting another player. The first time he received a seven-match ban. The second time he was banned for ten games. I mean, what on earth is wrong with him? I, I wonder if he's got psychological problems. Oh, I, I said something very similar, but in slightly cruder terms to my team earlier on. The thing is... We're interested in this story. I don't like football, the World Cup tedious. We're interested in this story. I, I think this guy should be applauded, and this, this behaviour should be encouraged. If you want to make football sexy, then let's get a bit of aggression in it, guys. But don't you think it's very peculiar? Oh, very this odd, This is a yeah. grown man. I, what is he, 27? Yeah. Oh, and he's, a, he's a nut job. And he's, he's, he's fighting people on the football he's pitch. He's a complete fruitcake. What's wrong with him? Yeah. The question is, and from nine this yes. morning, I want your suggestions. How do you think Luis Suarez should be punished? Now, you were a biter when you were a kid. Yep. I've heard you mention this before. Yep. How did your mother deal with your biting? I was three years old. I bit my sister and I bit the cat's paw and threw it down the stairs. She um, took me into the living room. Remember it? Well, she took me into the living room. We kneeled down on the floor. She rolled up my right sleeve. She sank her teeth into my right forearm. Never did it again. See, I wonder whether that's what's necessary. The ref needs to bite him. Well, I think sometimes people don't realise... Yeah. Um, some people lack empathy, don't they? There's just do. a natural lack of empathy in some people. And yeah. perhaps he doesn't realise the effect of his biting. Mm. It's like you're, you, when you were a child, you didn't realise how much it hurt. Of course. When you, when you bit somebody. So your mother showed you, you learnt. Did you ever bite again? No, no. in my defence, and this wasn't my defence at the time, and I still stand by it, the cat did put his paw in my mouth. Toby did put his paw in my mouth. So I'm just, you know, saying... It's not, not, it's, it, there's two sides to every story. Well, I just wonder whether, ultimately, the best way to teach him is for someone to bite him. Set Blatter should bite him. He's a football man. Well, if you realised how much it hurts to be bitten by a grown man, yep. perhaps he'd stop doing it. Maybe. From nine this morning, I want your suggestions. How do you think Luis Suarez should be punished? 08459 four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. See, I... A, a televised biting of Suarez would be great, but I, th I think Jonathan's got the wrong end of the stick. I think this is great. I do think this is wonderful that he's done this. Two non-football men, myself and uh, Mr Vernon Smith, we've just spent five, eight minutes talking about what happened in the World Cup last night. I would rather night. you were talking about him because he'd given um, an opposing player a big kiss or something, something nice. Well, listen, if you want to start French kissing the other players... Excellent I, idea. They I, used to do it in the 70s, didn't they? I would be up for... They did, didn't in they? The 80s. They did use a kiss on the lips. That, my dad once said to me, there's only one reason for kissing another fella. That's if he's just scored a cracking goal. Uh, and he's your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Shailish is on the line. Morning, Shailish. Hey, good morning, Ian. How are you? I'm great, Shailish and Luton. What, do you, what would you like to say? Yeah, we just drive. I'm driving to work. I'm actually stuck in traffic, so I can speak on my phone. Fantastic. Uh, and I was watching the sky, looking for the nice weather that you are kind of losing out. Yeah, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful sunshine so, that we're yeah. missing out, stuck in this box. As I was watching it, I found a completely white plane with yeah. no markings on it, just going towards the airport. Oh. And I thought I should just call and report it. I mean, I... something which I've never seen before. Okay. Maybe it's thing which uh, one of the easy jets they're just painting it over or something no but it, the, got, it oh can't God. be the easy jet because the easy jet they, they brand everything they brand the, t the <laughs> loo paper so it's completely Absolutely. white could you tell was it was it a big plane a normal was it like a jumbo or what, 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 yeah, something it was smaller a big, i could not tell the make of it but it was a very big a normal big plane hey it could be um the england team coming home <laughs> they don't want to know. I mean, people will see them if they are not coloured, obviously. Yeah, well, I, yeah, exactly. Shailish, this, you've never seen anything like this before. No, no, this is the first time. Well, so I thought I listen to your show every day. Very nice, Sh uh, Shailish. While we've got you on, I'm glad you, you you find it very nice. Thank you. While we've got you on, Suarez is he a hero or a villain? I have no point to make on that. I think you're just trying to maybe bite his own lip. 
<laughs> but yet that may be Shailish, thank you very much indeed. Maybe he's trying to bite his own lip and he thought it was on another man's shoulder. Well, let's uh, put that out there. If you're out in Luton, have you spotted a white plane with no mark? All planes have markings these days. You would think. You would think, unless it was... Secret plane. Guantanamo prisoner detainees from Guantanamo have hijacked a plane. Oh, we're going into this scenario, are we? And they've painted it white. Right. That yeah. would be surely more noticeable than just just a plane that's got markings on. Uh, it's usual. You come, up with a, you come up with a better idea than it's Guantanamo detainees hijacking a plane. Uh, not put the stickers on yet. Uh, fair play, that is actually a better... Or it might be the plane of peace. Peace plane. Well, they're all sat on there with acoustic guitars and smoking doobies. Kels, want to play this game? Um, maybe it's a company just called Plane. Oh, yeah. Well, well, well they'd be called White. No, it's just Plane. Because it's Plane. Cause it's but, it's, a... but it's a plane. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here's the thing I hate about Americans. Yeah, well, and I hate wow. them oh, okay. for right. this. Yes. Right. What do you call, uh, Kelly, what do you call the thing that flies in the sky? Plane. Bird. Well, plane. Which one? Many. I know where you're going. OK. What do you call... I'm going to go on holiday to Lanzarote. Mm. Unlikely, I'm, I would say. Oh, very likely. I'm going to fly there. What am I going to fly in? A plane. OK, um, what's the full word? Aeroplane. OK. What do they call it in America? Plane. What was the name of the famous uh, 1970s series of... Police squad. ...films about airports and... Flying in that. What? A- aeroplane? No, no exactly. It, it was airplane. And when I was a kid, uh... they call it airplane. They don't know what an aeroplane is over there because they're, mm, they're idiots. They, and they don't even know that you spell air. How do you spell air in aeroplane, Kelly? In aeroplane? Yeah. A E R. Yes. That's my girl. She's been hanging out with us. I've rubbed off on her. And I, again, I'm sorry about that. But it seems to be having the desired effect, right? I was a child when airplane came out. I don't know how old. And I thought that that was part That's of the joke. Thing. I thought that was part of the joke that they called it airplane. Even at a young age, I thought, oh, that's funny they've called it airplane. That's a funny word. It makes sense. Because it's called an air... Actually, it's an aeroplane. Dear America... That's right. Take take notes, Kelly. Dear America. Dear America. Dear Mr. President of America. Dear Mr. President Obama. I think we're going to address it nicely, aren't we? Yeah, okay. When... Oh, why, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why? Hang on, hang on. Why? How many whys? Five. Okay, times five. Yeah. Do you call them airplanes? They're aeroplanes, you dummy. <gasps> Muppet. With respect. Muppet. Muppet. Plum. Plum. Plum's They're nice aeroplane. Stuff. You plum. You plum. Sort it out. Yep. Out. And release those prisoners from Guantanamo, like you promised seven years ago. Yeah. Lots of love. Lots of love. E. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm glad that's sorted. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. In Newport Pagnell on the speed sensors, London Road is queuing at the moment as you head towards the M1 at Junction 14. And then on the A40 London bound, the road is blocked between the Greenford flyover and the Medway underpass because of a car fire. Traffic is stationary on the approach and that's adding to the normal morning delays on the A40. In Kings Langley, we've got queues as you approach the M25 from the Hemel Hempstead turn-off. And the M25 itself, anti-clockwise, very slow between Junction 20 for Kings Langley and 16 for the M40. Public transport has no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 8.30, I'm Simon Oxley. Luton South MP Gavin Shuker says he expects the University of Bedfordshire to clear its name after allegations of fraud in the student visa system. The university has been banned from taking overseas students while an investigation is carried out. A 48-year-old man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the body of an 82-year-old woman was discovered yesterday lunchtime at a house in Stony Stratford. And MPs are to visit Yarlswood after bosses admitted that 10 staff have been dismissed from the Bedfordshire Immigration Centre following allegations of improper sexual contact with female detainees. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
Football's world governing body FIFA have opened disciplinary proceedings against Luis Suarez after more biting allegations. The Liverpool striker appeared to bite an Italian defender during Uruguay's win over Italy. Former England captain Alan Shearer wants a lengthy ban. I'm lost for words, honestly. It's, it's, it really is staggering. Found guilty at Ajax, found guilty at Liverpool, and if found guilty here, then he should be hammered. He really should. England's players are flying home after finishing their World Cup campaign with a nil-nil draw against Costa Rica. Here's manager Roy Hodgson. I don't think that any fair-minded person would suggest that the team did not show the right spirit, did not show the right commitment, and that we gave at any time any impression that we had nothing to play for. And I think our fans obviously appreciated that because at the end they gave us an ovation that obviously our results didn't merit. Last night, Colombia, who were already through, beat Japan 4-1 and Greece beat the Ivory Coast 2-1 with a late penalty to make it to the last 16 for the first time. England's cricketers lost a dramatic second test to Sri Lanka as James Anderson was out off the penultimate ball at Headingley after surviving 20 overs. Despite another serious defeat, under fire captain Alistair Cook is vowing to continue. No one has a divine right to be captain. You know, I'm hugely proud of the fact that I'm England captain. I've given it all so far. I'm desperate to continue doing it. I do believe that I'm the right man for job if someone else you know doesn't think that then you know the selectors don't think that and of course I have to take that on the chip. In the Minor Counties Championship at High Wycombe, Buckinghamshire did manage to hold out for a draw against Cambridgeshire, scoring 426 for eight with Rob White, 185 not out. And Andy Murray is back in action at Wimbledon today. The defending champion will play the Slovenian Blas Roller in the second round. BBC Three Counties News and Sport, the next full bulletin is at nine. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. Cafly. 08459 455 555 is the telephone number if you want to give us a call. So, what are we uh, discussing in the last 30 minutes of the show? Well, we're celebrating the magic of Suarez. Suarez. JVS is calling for a punishment and asking after now, what should his punishment be? No, 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 no. I don't think he should be punished. He has. Uh, we, we've had eight minutes of radio this morning where two non football fans, myself and Mr. Vernon Smith, have discussed the football. Yeah, we've not discussed the intricacies of it. We had a little bit of fun about Defender and Defendo and all of that stuff. But we talked about the World Cup. And you get all these pompous, high and mighty Alan Shearer types, indeed Alan Shearers, saying, well, well, it's disgraceful, you know. He should be locked up and then we should, like, kill him. Well, no, we should... I don't think he actually said kill him, but he said he should be punished. Why? Why? You, you sad because you didn't think of it? You jealous? You jealous? Because you didn't think of it? Because you didn't do it, Alan? Because you missed out on that trick? Suarez has made football a a dull sport and the the World Cup, which, to be honest, it's it's been a very dull World Cup, even by World Cup standards. He's made it exciting. He's brought an element of danger. You're going to think twice about tackling someone if if you suspect the gentleman you're about to tackle is a lunatic who's going to bite you. So what, we release the lions next time? Well, we talked about this, yeah. Why not have a lion roaming the pitch... With a, a, a ball that smells of meat. Yeah. That would be that would be wonderful. Now, I, I think you're being a little bit flippant and not treating I'm this with I'm being hugely flippant. Uh, but I am well, just imagining the Brazilian players trying to do their tricks while the lion's after them. Lions, for the most part, guys, they're, they're very docile creatures. Some would be particularly scared of a lion. But if, if, it gets, if you mistime your kick and that meaty ball hits it in the face... Yeah. If you're messing about, you want to you get the ball away from yourself and into that goal as quickly as possible. But Suarez, as far as I'm concerned, is an international hero. In, remember, football, in, football in the 70s, right? He's not an oaf with teeth. An international hero, you reckon? Football in the 70s, right? Mm-hmm. Muddy, dirty, sliding. Kissy, tackles, though. Kissy, kissy though. very kissy. But there was, there was a lot of physical contact. And all in the bath at the end. Si- exactly. What? Since the physical contact has been banned from football... Oh, it's so dull. It's so tedious. Let's let's get let's bring back a little bit of aggression. Let's let's have some, you know, some high kicks. Let's have some sliding tackles. Let's make it a proper game instead of this game for spoilt, thick millionaires. The problem is with the physical game is that already you've got certain uh, footballers from certain countries, European, who like to throw themselves on the floor. Didn't they want to come on, Kelly? No. Who, who was it? That's the third person I spoke right. to. We're going to start. I just want to quickly say, and I'm like, okay, do you want to come on? No. Right. Oh, right. I've had a couple oh. of them. We're well. going to start naming and shaming, okay? From now on, Ben in Wickham, that's one. Ben in Wickham. I'm not going to make his point. Liam in Watford and someone else about something right. else. Right. We're going to name and shame, okay? If you phone up, 
The first thing you're going to be asked, OK, is do you want to come on? If the answer's no... Put the phone down. In a lawn? Oh. No, put the phone down. So if you don't want to come on... What are you phoning for? It's a phoning show. It's not a phone up. It's not a one-stop shop to phone up and have a chat with Kels and Kath because you're feeling a bit lonely. Although it's always nice to hear from yeah, you. No, oh, I'll don't. Do that. Don't do the, give me this BBC line nonsense for goodness sake. Come I'm on. Not. I'm giving you the sensitive and caring individual. Seriously, line. put me in control of the BBC. I could shave millions off. First thing first, we get rid of EastEnders. That's gone. That's 100 million pounds a year we've saved. Second thing first. Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. Second thing's first, um, we get rid of all of those rubbish daytime dramas, doctors, stuff like that. Let's show some yep. classic TV series. I yeah? Agree, yeah. Thank you, Kelly. Third thing's first, we get rid of Kelly. Kelly? Me? Yeah. Oh. You, you agree with the first two, so you know I'm, I'm, I'm speaking sense here. Yeah. What would I do, though? Well, I don't know. You, you go and watch all the excellent stuff. Oh, I the know BBC. what I could do. Yeah. I would start up my own phone line where people could just ring me for a chat. Not, we won't have to put it on air. We'd just have Kel's, a chat. Kel's Bells. Give hey. Kel a bell. Give Kel's... No, it's Kel's, Kel's Bells. Bells. Better. Yeah. I, really I, I, I agree with all three of your points. X Four. What was the fourth? You pay me £100 a day. Why? Because I'm the boss of the BBC and I say mm-hmm. so. I don't agree with that one. OK, thanks very much indeed. Oh, 0845 four double five five double five. So we're talking about Suarez. Uh, we're also asking why, uh, why are glasses called bins? Long time no see. Well, apparently it comes from Leeds. I suspect there's more to it than that. I suspect there's more to it than it comes from Leeds. I got a sneaky feeling that uh, Maria... We, we've, we, we've chased it back to Leeds. Vibrant Maria. Vibrant Maria. We've, we've got it back to Leeds. I suspect that the, it, its entomology springs forth elsewhere. Where was the last time... Where was the last place... No. Where was the last time someone said it to you? We'll, we'll trace it that way. We'll make a map and put pins in it. I don't hello? get... I don't, hello. hello. I don't get Matt today on the front page of The Telegraph. What? He's a genius. He, he writes what we see. It's an old-fashioned newspaper salesman, the type of which no longer exists. He has a flat cap. He has a scarf. He stood between two hoardings. Stan it. Exactly. It's a stan it. The left-hand hoarding, so I presume we're supposed to read this first. David Cameron, profoundly sorry. We know what that's referring to. Or is it? Because the right-hand hoarding, Hodgson assured PM England could play football. Oh. Well, I don't get it. He flipped it. You thought he was talking about one case. Matt, flip that. He's talking about the football. Justin Dealey's gonna yeah. help me <laughs> make the girl mine keep a stood in line. Justin Dealey's gonna help me Ooh. make the girl mine wave the victory sign. Oh, that was good. Thanks, man. Wow. Hey, boss, I've been taking it to the streets. Oh, yeah. Taking it to the streets for you. Thanks, mate. I appreciate That's that right. a lot. Not a problem. Um, Suarez, oh, what were we talking about? Suarez still. Yeah. yeah. J- JVS is doing a phone in. How should he be punished? I think he's grabbed to the wrong end of the stick. This man should not be punished. He should be given <laughs> man of the tournament. He should be made king of Brazil. Uh, yeah. Uh, and they should give him uh, a monkey and a, and, uh, a coconut tree. You're do they have monkeys in Brazil? Muffet, you really are. They must have monkeys. Yeah, they do. They do. They must have monkeys in Brazil. See, so they've got like let's imagine a Brazilian monkey scampering up a coconut yeah, tree. Have you not seen the film Rio? You have seen the film Rio. I've seen Rio too. They got monkeys. Both of them are rubbish. Anyway, Justin, why have I got this wrong? Well, have you seen his teeth? Have yeah. you seen them? I'm going to Google his teeth. Hang yeah. on. Just Google his teeth, right. and you're honestly telling me you would want those huge teeth going into your skin? No. Oh, <laughs> look at those yeah. gnashers! <laughs> exactly. Flipping it. Did he get them from the 1970s? Are they gonna, <laughs> do you have to wind them up and they start walking around on their own? Oh, that's incredible. That is an amazing set of teeth. Exactly. Now, now, now do you see what I'm talking about? No, you're wrong. Listen, you, you remember football in the 70s, Justin, when it was a proper game, right? Yeah. Muddy pitches. Why, why do pitches not get muddy anymore? Because we have very good groundsmen. We've kind of moved on now. Moved on with the times. No, we want muddy pitches. I want sliding tackles. I want um, uh, karate kicks uh, that are high. I want uh, lobs. I want all of those things. W- would that make you go and watch a football game? Yes, it would. If really? there was, if there was uh, a minimum of three people stretched off per yeah. game, I'm there. Totally. <laughs> of course, it's like ultimate fighting, isn't it? Oh, you're Cage fighting. You're an interesting character. So, uh, Suarez, uh, oh. should he be banned for life? Um, no. What have you bitten by accident? Yeah. Uh, when was the last time that you bit someone? <laughs> You've gone through all three. I have. I've taken this one to the streets. <laughs> this is quite entertaining. Here's what people had to say. Thank you, Just. She in vile... Swear word, isn't he? You, I mean, what can you say? He should be banned. You're furious about this, aren't you? 
Oh, it's just ridiculous, third time, like I say. Have you ever bitten anybody by mistake? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think Probably so. when you were two years no. old. He's a disgrace to football. He should be banned on a worldwide basis. It's been a fantastic tournament, loads of goals, lots of great players, and he's just come along and ruined it for everybody, I think, and we don't need that in football. Morning, madam, from me and Lee's show, who was the last person that you bit? Pardon? Who was the last person that you bit? Nobody. Colin, you've seen this incident. What do you think about it? It should be banned. Banned for life. There's no place in football for biting. There really isn't. There's just no excuse. And he knew he, what he'd done was wrong by his reactions afterwards. I mean, what so do you think would happen if, if I was to stand here with you right now and bite three people? What, what do you think would happen to me? You'd be put in prison, wouldn't you? Exactly. You'd be arrested. Is <laughs> this no question? He's, he's, he should be banned. He's a, a, an animal. Here's Dino in a beautiful sunshine this morning. Dino, what have you bitten by accident? Ian wants to know. I, I've bitten my tongue a few times. Painful? Uh, it's very painful, yeah. It is, uh, Anything else? I have bitten my fingers. <laughs> I've bitten my fingers. I'm, I'm looking at them right now. Are you scarred for life because of that? Oh, no, no, not scarred for life. No, 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 definitely not scarred for life. And uh, Suarez, we're talking this morning about him. Is it about time that he was banned once and for all for life? Get him out of the game. Oh, yeah, ban him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Morning, Andy. Luis Suarez, should he go forever? He should do, yeah. Without a doubt. Banned for life. Disgrace. How angry does this man make you feel? He's just, he's, he's done it before. He's never going to learn. He should be banned for life. End off. He's a genius, though, isn't he? Don't matter. If he's a genius, he wouldn't go around biting people, would he? Animal. Complete animal, I think. Should be banned from football. What, for life? For life. Third time, third time he's done it. Would you not miss him? Not at all. And Ian wants to know this morning, have you ever bitten something by mistake? Not three times. <laughs> so, so, so what have you bitten by mistake the first time, then? My finger when I'm eating food. <laughs> Not three times. You know what I mean? It's completely different. Yeah. Completely different. When how badly damaged was your finger when you bit it by mistake? Um, not, not as bad as them three people that he's bit. Yeah. Teeth marks in it and everything. Yeah. He's, he's put pressure on it, hasn't he? When you bit your finger, was it finger looking good? Not at all. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. The, the fella there, Justin, got it right. Oh, well, you got it right. He's a genius. Oh, he is a genius. He's yeah. a genius. Yeah, yeah, he and is. Geniuses but, don't but. play. Geniuses don't play by the rules of society. Brian right. Wilson. <laughs> Brian Wilson, the songwriter for the Beach Boys. Genius. Yeah. Are you seriously comparing the Beach Boys to, to Luis Suarez? Brian Wilson is a genius. Yeah. Yes. He spent three years in bed. Three years in bed. He was too scared to have a shower in case nothing came out. Do you know what you have just made? Genius. The best point of the day. And you don't even realise it. Go on. Because you just said he spent three years in bed. Yep. That's what Suarez needs to do. Oh, get... Three years in bed, ban him for three years, and then potentially bring him back. Jog on, Justin. Jog on. David's in Milton Keynes. Morning, David. Morning, Ian. What would you like to say? Well, I watched the game yesterday. and I'm sorry you, to hear that. If you watch it carefully, uh, from what I see, he didn't... The player hadn't done nothing to him all game. Yeah. Apart from stopping him scoring, which is what he's there for. Yeah. But... That was a deliberate lunge at him. He didn't, he hadn't done nothing. He just ran straight up and sunk his teeth into his shoulder and then fell on the floor holding his teeth because he hurt himself because he bit him so hard. Yeah. That's what he did. But So I he mean, hurt himself, he hurt his own teeth? I think so. Cause Brilliant. Because he watched afterwards, he was holding his front teeth. I Beautiful. think he bit him so hard. Yeah. Because obviously it's bone on the top. Well, so, there, bo- so both both men were injured. Well, yeah. Well, this he, is well, great. Because yeah, if you watch it, he, as the player spun round, the actual player's elbow never caught him at all. When yeah. he fell down, he was holding his teeth, not his anywhere else. It was his teeth here biting him. Do you not agree, though, David? It, it, he's made he's made football exciting again, hasn't he? He's, he's br- breathed he's life into it. Player. I mean, who else would have thought that when England took that when they took that goal kick, that Gerrard was going to flick it onto him? to score. Yeah, I mean, well, it, only he could have thought that, couldn't he? Well, no one else did, because no one else went for that ball, did they, apart from him? David, are you in the bathroom? No, I'm um, in my hallway. Oh, OK. Just, it sounds very, I, I was worried for a second that you were on, on, on the lavvy or something, because it sounds very <laughs> echoey there. No, the wife's not here now, so it's quite quiet at home. Yeah, yeah well, that, that would explain. One of those wives <laughs> noisy. David, thank you very much indeed. 08459 455 555 is the telephone number. Suarez has breathed life into a lifeless tournament. He's a genius. We've established that. And as we all know, genii do not play... By conventional rules. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
We've had updates from Laura and Daniel in Coney Heath, the A414, as you head towards the A1M. One lane is blocked at Coney Heath Lane with congestion going back to the London Coney roundabout at the moment. Uh, that's after a lorry that's broken down. The A40 London bound, one lane closed between the Greenford flyover and the Medway underpass following an earlier car fire and traffic being completely held for a time. We've got queues on the approach, which are adding to the normal delays all the way from the Denham roundabout. The M25 anti-clockwise, very slow still between Junction 20 for Kings Langley and 16 for the M40. Also, the M1 London bound delays between Junction 10 for Luton and 9 for Redbourne. Public transport, no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Oh, oh, thank you very much, Alice. It's 8.46, it's Wednesday the 25th of June. I'm going for a fry-up after this. Coming, guys. These are your news headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Uh, Luton South MP Gavin Shuker says he expects the University of Bedfordshire to clear its name after allegations of fraud in the student visa system. A man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after the body of an 82-year-old woman was discovered yesterday lunchtime at a house in Stony Stratford. And in sport, former Watford and England manager Graham Taylor says Suarez needs professional help after more biting allegations. Coming up, Matt in Luton, Ben in Wickham, and maybe you as well if you uh, give us a call quickly, 08. 459 455 555. All of that after the weather with Kate. Beds, hearts, and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Good morning. It's a beautiful start to the day. Blue sky and sunshine. A bit fresher than it's felt for a while, though the air that little bit cooler. And that really reflects in the later temperature this afternoon. We're looking at a maximum of around 20 Celsius. But we're still going to get some sunny spells. A bit more cloud perhaps this afternoon. Overnight we'll get uh, some clear spells. The wind quite light. We could see a bit of mist develop by dawn tomorrow. With a minimum temperature 11 Celsius. For tomorrow, a similar start. Blue sky, sunshine, perhaps a bit more fair weather cloud bubbling up through the course of tomorrow afternoon but that marks the change which happens overnight on Thursday maximum temperature 21 Celsius we've got some heavy showers arriving through the middle of Thursday night and they're going to stay with us right the way through Friday Saturday and Sunday and that's your forecast a Copa do Mundo no Brasil it's the post and it's in. Today at five, Bosnia Herzegovina play Iran and Nigeria against Argentina. Then at nine, hang on a second, Catherine. I'm going to um, the full name of Bosnia. Yes. Now, Bosnia Herzegovina. Well, 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 what happened to Bosnia Herzegovina? Oh, you say it like that. Well, I thought I said I said it correctly. <sighs> Bosnia Herzegovina, but okay. Bosnia Herzegovina. That's how I. Kelly, do. how would you say it? Bos. OK, all right, fair, we'll carry on with this then. Honduras versus Switzerland and Ecuador against France. Brasil 2014. The one we've all been waiting for. One of the great World Cup goals. For a full list of commentaries across the BBC, search BBC World Cup. Shamrock called us up earlier on to tell us about an all-white plane that he'd seen in the sky. Shamrock? What's his name? What was his name? Shalesh or something. Yeah, Shalesh. Well, I was, I was as close as you. Shamrock. Uh, well, April, who works at uh, Luton Shamrock. Airport, 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 has <laughs> uh, uh, emailed in an all-white aircraft, because that's what it is. What's the difference between an aircraft? Anyway, an all-white aircraft has either been sprayed white to be passed on to the next owner, so it could be a millionaire buying a new aeroplane. So, like I say, not put the stickers on yet. Yeah, or it could be US military. So I, I reckon it's US military, and I reckon they're um, either carrying uh, prisoners, uh, nuclear waste, or um, time travel technology. Technology from a spaceship that they've got. OK, yeah. Enjoy that fantasy. No, why, why would it be? Why not, mate? Why not? You think these things don't happen? Do you really think these things don't happen? I think we probably know about it by now. What? Oh, yeah, we know if the US military was... Listen, if you... We right. know that they transport pr- prisoners. Right, yes, OK. I'm talking about the time travel bit. Well, I, OK, forget the time travel. But oh, it's something, right, gloss over it. There it's something from, a, a, something from a spaceship. We know they do that. Hello. Fact. Fact, is it? Yeah, it's a fact. Oh. It's a fact. We, we know, don't we, guys? Don't we? We know, don't we, Matt? 
We don't want to know. I don't want to talk to you about Suarez. It's not the play. Oh, oof, dear. Matt's off to a feisty start. He doesn't, he, he doesn't want to acknowledge that the uh, Americans are flying bits of alien technology into our country, into Luton Airport, miles from your home, in an, uh, in an unmarked, possibly unmanned aircraft. You don't want to know, you don't want to know about that? I do not. Unbelievable. Matt, it's your closed mind that keeps this society you get oppressed. Off that subject and get on to what we want to talk about, All right, please. Matt, what, do you, what do you want to talk about then, Matt? You want to talk about why glasses are called bins? Your friend Suarez. Yep. I, if only he were. If only he and were. And you don't know nothing about football. You are absolutely useless. Well, Matt, why... Oh, you... you can give that man time. He should be barred from the world. Barred from the world? He's an animal. Are He's you... an animal. He should be put in the desert and left in Brazil. Put in the, in, in, in the, in, in the forest, sorry. Hang on, mate. Which, which is it going to be? Is it a d- desert or is it a oh, forest? I, oh, I knew you'd say. I yeah, knew which you'd one's it going to be, that. Matt? You don't know anything about geography. I know more about geography than you know about football. Oh, and uh, I know which I'm ones sorry, are more useful. Sorry, Mr. Brainbox. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, all I'm saying to you, right. you don't know anything about football. Exactly, and because there aren't enough characters like Suarez going around biting people. Like no, you don't want characters. You want you want the clones. We don't want characters you want like dull. For God's sake, Ian, would you stop? You it? need a Matt. This is very rarely I say this. You need yeah. a slap because you are hysterical and you're talking, you, talking out you of your bum. If Suarez, you are talking that. out of your bum. Look, if he had done that to Alan Shearer, Alan Shearer would have killed him. Oh, oh, OK. So you, you don't like biting, but now you're condoning murder on the football pitch. That's what he should have happened to him last night. Somebody he should have got murdered. Good hiding. He should have... So, right, you don't want the man to bite someone, but you want the others to turn around and give him a kick in the kicking of his a life. Good slap, a really? good slap. Really? You yeah, think he, that's appropriate, do you? He should have been taken in the dressing room and given a oh, good slap last night. Oh, yeah, as night. long as it doesn't happen on the pitch, violence is all right. Matt, you are talking completely out of your backside today. I know, yeah. Yeah, and I know that's why I'm talking to you, mate. Good, good day. Good day to you, Matt. Good day. Flipping heck. No, he's, he's properly annoyed me today. Calm down. No, he's properly annoyed me Calm today. Down. That was the most rubbish thing he's ever said, and he said a lot of oh, rubbish. Talk to Ben in Wickham. Ben's in Wickham. Good morning, Ben. Hello, this uh, is Ben in Wickham. You're, oh, oh. Ben, ben, you did a hit and run earlier on, didn't you? Yeah, I was driving with a policeman up my bum, nearly, if you'll pardon the expression. (laughs) Well, (laughs) so so you tease us. Yes, Ben, what would you like to say? Well, I don't know why you keep on droning on about this aircraft. Oh. Yeah, aircraft. Oh, hey, 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 it was an aeroplane joke. Yes. Ah! Aeroplanes, aircraft. Why is it not an aerocraft? Do you know what? That's the most intelligent question we've had all week. And it's intelligent because I can't answer it. I don't know. What, what does plane mean? It's a, a shortening. It's, a, it's an abbreviation. Of? Aeroplane or airplane. Well, no, no, or an airplane. We, we, we don't, we don't buy into this airplane nonsense. But that's why it's not called an aircraft, mm. because of, of the plane is short for aeroplane. Well, you just talked about an aircraft on your show but two minutes ago. Well, yeah, I know. A aircraft. Yes, military. U.S. military transporting probably, quite possibly, um, bits of alien technology to Luton Airport. How does that make you feel as a person? Well, all right, as long as it's in an aircraft and not an aeroplane. Well, thank you very much indeed, Ben. Uh, Michael is, I don't know where. Morning, Michael. Morning. Morning, Michael. What would you like to say? Um, Louis Suarez, uh... Maybe you did it by accident, you never know. We all buy it by accident, don't we? Three times, though, Michael. That's a quite a high accident ratio. Yeah, well, yeah, true, true. True that, true that. But he's probably going to get along bad, whether we like it or not. Well, but would well, you agree with me, Michael? He is, he is an artist, OK? And artists, true artists, do not follow convention. He has brought uh, wit, spark, controversy and excitement to a rather flaccid World Cup, hasn't he? I was agreeing with you until he started to say wit and spark. All right, take the wit and spark out. He's made it exciting, hasn't he? Oh, yes, he's done that for sure. Do you want to see more players that are prepared to have a go? I think no. Have a go, yes. If... I think the guy that fouled him should get should get in trouble as well for fouling him. Exactly, exactly. And what, Michael? I mean, you, you've just you're you're a legend, mate. You've just given me the answer. Two players foul each other simultaneously. What they do is they lower a cage into the centre of the pitch. Mm-hmm. Those players get three minutes to uh, knock each other about. 
winner stays on. Yeah? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Thank you very much indeed. He thought about it, he considered it, and he went for it. Now, now, now I'm th- talking, huh? Thunderdome. Thunderdome. I've got so many ideas on how we can improve football. They all involve violence. <laughs> Not all of them. Double football, super soccer doesn't. Well, I, it, that will lead to violence, won't it? No, no, no. no if you play, that, one's, that one's not a violent game. Um, the tiger one is. Is a lion. Or a tiger, yeah. I would suggest, yeah, depending yeah, on which yeah. one's easiest to get hold of. That was your idea, wasn't it, I think? Might have had a play. Had M- the meaty ball was my idea. <laughs> the meaty ball. The lion was your idea, the meaty ball was mine. OK. Um, but we lower a cage into the middle of the pitch. Two players, they, they, they sort it out. Mano a mano. While you everyone, know you would watch that. While everyone chants, fight, fight, fight. It's like um, that cage fighting that's very popular. I was invited to a cage fight once. I was so tempted to go, um, but I know my wife would have uh, thought very, very lowly of me. Uh, still tempted to go. But um, it would be something to... Lee's in Luton. Lee? Yeah? Ever been to a cage fight? No, I haven't, no. You're tempted, though, aren't you? Yeah, I'd go, yeah. Yeah, of course you were. Bare-knuckle men fighting each other, bashing each other about in the ring. They can't escape because they're locked in a cage. Yeah, sounds good. It does sound awesome, doesn't it? Yeah, but what I want to say is that last bloke you had on the radio, yeah. how can you bite someone by accident three times? Well, you can definitely do it once, because you could, like, fall on someone with your mouth. As you're, as you're saying, um, uh, ra- uh, rabies, rabies. And if on the air you trip over, and I fell on, Cass got a bare shoulder. If I was saying rabies and I tripped over and fell on the, the, the bare shoulder with my teeth, when you fall over, Lee, you use anything you can to stable your balance, don't you? I suppose it's mid-teeth, yeah. yeah. So you would use your, you just, your teeth would clench down to try and get your balance, get you a bit of purchase. Yeah, OK, I'll give you that one. What about um, <laughs> the, the planes as well, yeah? I don't think you'd get a plane in the sky that was flying without any, any numbers whatsoever. It's happening. And why would the US military bring prisoners to Luton? Right, well, first of all, first thing is, it's happening. There is a white plane that is unmarked circling Luton right now. I don't want to panic you, but it's happening. It may have all landed. Uh, And secondly, why would would they bring them um, to Luton? Yeah. Uh, Well, as we all know, Bedfordshire College is uh, being investigated for having students that don't speak foreign languages. Maybe they're trying to, you know, smuggle Guantanamo Bay prisoners out that way. I don't know. (laughs) I mean, why would they bring them to Luton? So that we could torture them, of course, Lee. Yeah, sounds good to me. You're not buying the theory that there might be alien technology on that aeroplane? No, not at all. Why? Because I'm, I'm buying the theory that it's probably a new plane that's been ordered and it's going into yeah. land Luton to be painted up. That's what, they, that's what they want you to think, Lee. Yeah, it is, yeah. Probably. Thank you very much indeed. That's what they want you to think. That's what I think. No stickers yet. Can I get purchase on your um, shoulder? If you purchase on my shoulder... I will purchase. I love the way very heavily on you. I love the way the way Lee said, "Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'll buy that." When it was obviously <laughs> the most ridiculous, made-up bullshine I've ever said in my life. Complete and utter. But you said it with such conviction. That's you, you, that's the trick, guys. She's just pulled away the curtain. It's just a, a, a short old man wearing glasses. There is no wizard. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. We've had updates from Laura and Daniel in Coney Heath, the A414 as you head towards the A1M. One loan is blocked at the Coney Heath lane. That's because a car transport has broken down and congestion showing up on the speed sensors through the surrounding routes, affecting the London Coney roundabout and also the Park Street roundabout. On the A40, London bound, one lane is closed between the Greenford flyover and the Medway underpass after an earlier car fire. We've got queues on the approach adding to the normal morning delays. The M25 anti-clockwise queuing at the moment between Junction 18 for Chorleywood and 16 for the M40. Public transport, though, that's all looking good with no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Alice. The team and I are off for a cheeky little fry-up. Yes, please, sir. We're also going to record the links for this week's podcast. You can get the podcast on iTunes. JVS is up next until tomorrow at 6 from us. Ta-ta. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Ian. Good morning. Welcome to the JVS Show. I'm Jonathan Vernon-Smith. Coming up on today's big phone-in, I'm asking, how do you think Luis Suarez should be punished? 
Last night, Uruguay and Liverpool striker Luis Suarez.